All right, so yeah, plan on next week uh, coming on over. Don't be late, Josh. <laughs> <That's> funny. <laughs> Try to get up on time, and we'll uh, yeah, let's do a recap. Uh, who did the recap last week? Was that me? I get a pick. I'm gonna have Brian. You can go ahead and do a recap. Um, do you remember two weeks ago? Oh, I have a few notes. All right, here we go. <laughs> so my notes say that Countess Sensory from Stormhaven was responsible for the night storm calamity. Um, her keep is called Lina Mall, and it's another floating island. Dishara from Fireshire is where the sentence ends. <laughs> and then question Ronald the cultist. And then I have a map that shows a pretty similar layout to the what you have though with the few notable complications that are really going to make it hard for me to do my aoe rage thing so, so that... we're, we're gonna we're gonna um, have to experiment experiment with whatever is going on um there was a few fun chatting i just lost everyone And the ogre voice is the best. The uh, ogre guy. voice. Oh. Uh, sure, sure. This is the ogre voice. Yes. It's a bit complicated, but we're going to use it for a little while. Um, here's Santa Claus, actually. That's kind of a fun one. Ho, 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 ho. <laughs> that does not sound like Santa Claus. Hey, well, <laughs> it's I, just I not don't jolly enough. Funny. Well, <laughs> I'm not jolly enough. Right, give me all your money, and we'll return your daughter. Ooh, there you go. <laughs> God. I don't know. I don't choose. I don't choose any of this stuff. You know what? That was an audio masterpiece. Yeah. Well, I appreciate the attempt. Um, so, um, Carmen and I did get into a little bit of a kerfuffle. Um, we made the wrong choice, and <laughs> now we have to fight some ogres. Orcs. Orcs. Yeah, they're they're all the same to the dwarf. That's some fucking sure. green skins. Some greens. There's some little Um, greens and some big greens, right? Yeah. In in short, we made it to the north, and we had an opportunity to go rest. We decided we wanted to tough it out for no good reason. Now we have (laughs) to fight uh, nine angry orcs who want our cave and our caves, if you will about right I, I think i got about half that recap but that's fine that's good enough hey you know what these things don't matter it was it was pretty uh, uh improvised um. <laughs> okay wow <laughs> what's wrong man it's it's cracking me up man <laughs> I mean, I love to experiment. I gotta stay on the cutting edge of these things. There's no, <laughs> no reason not to do, um... Be willing to take more advantage of the few good things that come of being locked in your basement when you're supposed to be hanging out with your friends. So, I mean, use the technology that you've got going on. There's, what, what else are you gonna do? Pretend that, you know, we're all still living in the normal day-to-day life. <laughs> Sweet. (laughs) (laughs) Did Josh just leave too? Yeah. (laughs) All right, you got a few more minutes of this. See, right now it's just low static. That's nothing. Whatever that was. That's disappointing. That one's called King Kong. Rumble, 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 So anyway, for anyone who wants to know, I downloaded something called Voice Mod, which is an app you can use to change your voice, and it works with Discord. It just counts as a preamp, um, and it 
slightly distorts things. Or generally fun effects. Oh, there you go. Old timey announcer or something. Yeah. yeah. Step right up. Step right up. And new dollars. And new recorders. Okay, well, since Josh isn't here, let's go ahead and begin. He's only second initiative anyways. As of he's last week, like, you uh-huh. guys were... Okay, back. Hey, he's back. Yep, sorry, one of my kids is a rash. You guys are preparing to be ambushed <laughs> by nine orcs. Yes, we are. I had everyone roll initiative, and let's roll the orcs initiative, because that hasn't happened yet. Rolling, rolling, rolling. So how far are these guys? They're not that far out. Uh, it's like make... 90 feet. That's awesome. They have to make it to us in this round and still hit us. So that's great. And no, they can't, because at... they would have to move. Then they'd have to dash. And then they'd they have, have to use that... their bonus action. Don't they have that crazy thing, aggressive or whatever, that most orcs have? Correct. They, they can, can move like, an extra 30 feet towards right. their enemies. So I guess they can't get to us and act, but they can get to us in this round. Correct. So they could this get works. to you this round. So it looks like the orcs are going to go first. Amazingly, they rolled a 20 on their initiative. Oh, good. Starting out right. Yes. Let's go ahead and <clears throat> start moving. I think my measuring tool actually works this time. Whoa. Do you guys see that? Yep. I don't know. Oh, yeah. Yep. Okay. 30, 35, 40. It's because the squares are the right size. Usually, like the nice. last couple ones. Yeah, usually fuck them big. up. Way to go, Ryan. I did it. You're competent. Hooray. Woo. And they'll go. Yeah, they're going to go approximately there. They're starting to crowd in. Oh, my goodness. There's a lot of them. Yeah. Yeah, they all moved at once. They do all move at once, and they all move first. They're actually going to start throwing javelins. Now, you guys are in um, (laughs) dim light. Mm -hmm. There's a torch here, and there's a torch here, and it's shedding light on the outside battlefield. Theodore, you are on top of this hill, which it would look a lot like this. Uh Uh-huh. Comparatively. Uh, That's cool. What they're going to do is they're going to not close the distance. They're going to get close, and they're going to all start throwing javelins with disadvantage. Uh They can okay. see 10, 15, 20, 20, 30, 30, 30, 40, 40. They can see you two, Ito and Carmen. Cool. Yeah. See, yeah, this. I mean, I know Tom's not a genius, but this ice situation <laughs> is yep. like your negative. I don't know if you um, put ice in there. <laughs> I didn't understand that. Oh. Yeah, I had no clue. <laughs> that real quiet. Some of it I got. Some there of we it go. I, I didn't. I didn't mean to have a thing going on. Uh-huh. Does the advanced dice or let you roll a disadvantage? That would be awesome. I don't know. I don't either. What is an advanced dice roller? It's the dice roller. It's fine. Oh, but the advanced one? Yeah. Hmm. You can build it in. So they all just, but then you can't like, it's not easy to do and undo. Yeah, I know. I'm going to roll 18 D twenties. Let's see how that looks. They can throw them twice. Well, they're disadvantaged. Oh, sure. So I'll take every even result. Mm-hmm. I'm trying so to think of the quickest way to roll second, nine. The third and fourth. I'll take the second, the fourth. Yeah. Right. They're all grouped. Alright, well, so there's a natural 20. 10 and 10. Nope, can't but take that's it. not. Can't that's take it. Advantage. Oh, that's right, 17. That's still yep. a hit on Ito. I mean, if they're uh, anything. Let's see. First five will aim for Ito, second five, Carmen. Oh, convenient. Yeah. How convenient. 
I know. I have, I have an idea. How about you make me dump a ton of water so that it only fucks us? <laughs> Done. Great, great idea. <laughs> That's exactly where I would have put it. Out of nine javelins... <laughs> A single javelin hits Ito, and that's it. Actually, I forgot to add the plus five to everything. So the first five oh, are for Ito. Good. What's your AC, Ito? Uh, 14? 14. One, two, three. And then the rest are for Carmen, which they all miss Carmen for sure. Yeah, my shield is up. You I'm take three around. javelin hits in the initial barrage. Ouch, dude. Those are Four. three. I don't I take four? It's the first five attacks. So seventeen, ten, ten. Nope, seventeen, 12. ten. That's a three on the third one. And then a twelve. Yeah, the third one is not gonna hit you. Correct. Okay. Alright, get ready. I'm just gonna are roll them the again to do the damage. Eight so piercing. I take three hits. Eight piercing. And nine piercing. There we go. Wait. Who are you asking? Who can't yeah, you hear, talking. Josh? Yeah, I can't. Wait, are you guys... Say something. We are saying something. We're all oh, talking, buddy. Oh, I lost you guys from it. Oh, that's just <laughs> you. Yeah, that was. I was just checking. I was like, huh, everybody's really quiet. What's happening? <laughs> So I take eight, eight, and nine. Eight, eight, and nine. Holy yeah. shit, dude! That's a, that's a good chunk. Those are really hard hits. They yeah rolled pretty well. I think that's max damage on some of them. Who? Yeah, I I don't think I have I have control of my. There we go. So I can change my score. Eight. Um, hit points I have now. 20 out of 45. Yeah, use it in the, um... There. There you go. With shape water, could you make the ice a wall that closes off the cave? Um... Well, that was their turn. Tom, it's your turn now. You were just, um... <laughs> filled with javelins. Brutally javelined. Uh, da, da, da. I'm like, holy See? fuck, lad. Are you alright? No, particularly, no. And, <laughs> yeah, this, I can't believe that you imagined that's the ice situation. Doesn't make sense. <laughs> alright, so, I'm gonna spend an you entire imagine? turn like, here. <laughs> putting you said at the mouth of the it. cave. Yeah, well, your cave is also not at all like you described it last week. But let's just go An forth with it. Igloo I'm going to use I'm going to use my shape water again to instantly change everything around. And I'm going to yeah, I'm going to flip it up so that it goes actually it's only Yeah, see there's a five foot cubes worth. So one, two, three, four, five, six. Yeah, six of those squares. And I'm going to shrink the... Basically make a little wall so that it connects from here to here. Okay, how tall is the wall? Well, it, I'm basically flipping most of this. So it would be five, ten feet. Ten feet high? We're going to take, yeah, basically this because that six sides of five foot would be a five foot cube um and i'm gonna flip it on edge and a lot of it how thick is this wall then pretty thin um well if each it would be a full cube so five foot what do we, what do we got by density so if we do it one foot thick, it would still be five, six times five, thirty-five cubes. I can't do math in the morning, man. 
<laughs> You're an engineer, bro. What do you I mean? gotta look up the spell. Shape water, it's called, right? Yeah. It's a cantrip. All right, let's see what we got here. One action for a five foot cube. I think it'll probably be like hiding behind sheetrock in a gunfight. Like, I don't think it'll stop a javelin, but it might make it harder for them to see us and give us partial cover. So, five foot cube is 125 square feet. So, um, is that right? No. Dude, 25 I square feet. Right. Okay, there you go. Now, so I have one actual question about all of this. Can you shape ice? My assumption from the reading says that you can change the water's color or opacity. The water must be changed the same way throughout. Change lasts for an hour, including things like you can freeze the water, provided there are no creatures in it. Uh, cause the water to form simple shapes doesn't really designate what like any limitation based on the but it does phase say you do more than one of those things right you do like three of them yeah mm -hmm. so could you unfreeze it make it stand up and then freeze it one two three i um that would be casting it multiple times i think you're gonna uh -huh. have to find some new water I don't believe you can actually shape ice once it's shaped. Why? It's still water. <laughs> well, just looking at a quick ruling, most people would designate that it's ice, not water. At that point. It does say you freeze the water. It doesn't say you can move the water. Well, let's so... go to this question. Can you turn it to vapor? No. You can change its opacity. So how dark it is, change it to ice, and you can cause the water to form into simple shapes and animate at your direct. So you say that once it becomes frozen, ice, that's it. it is not water anymore. It is All not right. designated so you, by the spell. All right, I'm going to waste my entire turn using my... Uh, Magician staff, and I'm just going to smash the ice in front of me because I'm going to undo that which I have done because reasons. Oh no. Crush, crush, crush. <laughs> Are you going <laughs> to do anything else? Uh, Yeah, I'll take an entire turn. <laughs> you going to let me? <laughs> wait. Well, it depends. Are you going to let me? Take your entire turn? Of course you can take your entire turn. Okay, smash! I smash some ice. Um, and then, now that we've got that settled, I'm going to... Now, oh, where's the map? I lost one map. One, two, three, four, five. Thomas, you get an inspiration. Um, Yo! So, 30. And... You're so open, guys. I'm oh, by the way, where was that rest. trap that I laid? No, dude, what? No, 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 no. That's too far. <laughs> I used the I... rest of my move. I double move. You can't um, double I move. Rage. You... Well, I guess if you're not uh, smashing ice, is that an action? I'll let you double move. <laughs> <laughs> Great. <laughs> and I rage. Shh. And I'm going to use my thing. So, Man. slash roll. <laughs> Oh, One D eight. You're gonna use your special. Seven. Shadows weave around a weapon of your choice you are holding. Until your rage ends, your weapon deals psychic damage instead of its bludgeoning, slashing, or piercing damage. And it gains the light and throne properties with a normal range of twenty feet and a long range of sixty feet. Whoa. If you drop or throw the weapon, the weapon dissipates and reappears in your hand at the end of your turn. All right. Well What's your spiritual weapon. Wow. So un, un, that's amazing if I hadn't charged into them. <laughs> yep. That would be great true. if you had stayed back. <laughs> I was really hoping for one of the AOE effects. Uh, okay. Uh. All right. Thomas raged. He runs out into the middle of it all. Carmen. 
and he looks pretty beat up. Oh fuck! Okay, I've got three One, spears in me. Two, three, four, five. I run up to here, um, because that's as far as I can run because I'm slow. Oh, man, are we gonna do this? One, two, three, four, five. Oh man, we're gonna do this. Okay, I'll get. <laughs> <laughs> yes, and I double words. I double move and I healing word you with a second level healing word. This is bad. So yeah. you're going to get. Well, my ice plan to help back. cordon everything off didn't really do anything. Well, uh, wait my turn upcast was in. worthless. I got a four <laughs> and then a one. So right, get so 13. 13 hit points. 13. That's this man. Yeah, dude. You're welcome. Here it comes. And I say, fuck, here we go. <laughs> 33. Here we go. Save changes. Arthur. You watch them run into battle. They are at 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, 40. They're at the edge of the light. As far as you can see, they almost go out of the light. We're doing it, man. Fireball. You can't see in the dark, so you can barely see this orc here and Carmen here. You can't actually see where Ito went. Mm -hmm. Okay. So. Five, oh, gee. So what are you going to make next, man? <laughs> make a monk. And then. Yeah. I'm Disengage. Go back it. Uh, I'm so sorry, guys. Yeah, maybe uh, I'll make a rogue, man. I haven't been a, a rogue. Hey, 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 hey. You're not dying anymore. yet. No dying talk <laughs> until you die. Once okay, you die, I'll then you can it. talk about dying. I'll save it for an hour. <laughs> yeah. I'm going to save it for a round. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're in some shit, man. I can just hit this guy right here, and I'm going to hit him with Ice Knife. Uh, you can see this guy. Yeah, this is the guy you gotta hit, man. He moved up. Yeah, but it's the torch light, not his light. Oh. Yeah. I can't see yeah, out. Well, the torch know, light it's... extends 40 feet. This guy right here, he's oh, in dim light. Night. Yeah, this is at night. Oh. Carmen and him are in dim light, so dim light to you would be disadvantage. On, like, um, range touch or range spell attacks, I guess. You can make him save versus a spell. Save no versus things game. would not be a disadvantage. Okay. Um, well, I guess I'm just going to cast him. You're going to cast Fire. what? Firebolt. Firebolt. Mm -hmm. Okay. We'll roll Does it once more. The torches? Ah! Yep. That's what happens with disadvantage. Oh, it's not bad. You still hit. The one guy you can see, the firebolt launches through the air. And it hits against him, and then it lights up everything around for a flash of a second. You see all the creatures around him. Now oh, you can see orcs. how many there are. Before you couldn't. It's, it's a, little, a little bit terrifying. Oof. Great. That's why I'll use the rest of my movement to duck back. All right, that was Arthur's turn. You hear someone in the back barking orders in Orcish. Only Carmen understands. He's yelling at a couple of his friends. Run in and get the mage. <laughs> oh, shit. I'm like, Art, look out, lad. They're coming for you. Theodore, it's your turn. Uh, so first off, did my hunting trap get any of them? Oh, yeah. Ooh. You got a bear trap out there. All right. I guess it's probably got that's me. That's a good question. <laughs> yeah. Not <laughs> one of us. Because we have no idea what you did. So. <laughs> Dorman war cry my lips. I run into the bear trap. Snap. <laughs> that's a good question. It would have been better to know before they ran in, but we can always see what happened. A DC 13 deck save. It did not. Yeah. They sprang the okay. trap, but were able to uh, move quickly enough to not be caught by it. Okay. Uh, and now I'm invisible to them, so I have advantage to hit, right? Mm hmm Correct, if you're okay. invisible to them. 
So I am going to target the one that got hit by a firebolt with my first arrow. Because of my feature, I get two attacks in my first turn of the combat. Do it. Steal advantage. Yep. Just making sure. Okay, and that does an extra 1d8 if it hits. So I'm going to start off with the Hunter's Mark. Bonus action. Does your second attack have to be taken as a bonus action? That would be good to know. Nope, it just does... Uh, attack twice. If you take an attack action, you make an additional attack that deals an extra 1d8 to the weapon's da damage type on hit. Okay. So my first attack will not be the one that does an extra d8. Uh, Do you have sharpshooter? Yep, and I'm going to use that as well. So, see how this first one goes. 17. <clears throat> Let me check my notes. Is a hit. Okay, so we got... And that's uh, the first five. one you shot at was the one that Arthur already hit, correct? Mm -hmm. Yes. It goes down immediately. You pierce it right through the skull. It lets out an orcish cry as it falls to the ground. Okay. So the second one I'll pick will be this guy, just for fun. Just for fun. Which guy? Oh, oh shit, he dies. <laughs> Which one was that again? Extra D8, so. Uh, yeah, I did this guy. So extra 2D8 because you create him. He yeah, goes down insane. immediately. Two shots, well placed, both headshots, and they go down. Do you want to do anything else on your turn? You can. Uh, uh, yeah. Oh, you can't move your hunter's mark again. That's right. Yeah, that's a bonus action, unfortunately. Oh, you know what? Actually, yeah, that extra D eight would have just been the uh, extra D eight from the thing because I wouldn't have been able to move hunter's mark. Because you cast so as a bonus move... action. Yep. I'll move over here so that I'm not shooting from the same spot. Okay. And that is my turn. Back to the top. Surprise, motherfuckers. Well, the the additional orcs that are still alive, not additional, the remaining orcs <laughs> that are still alive, <laughs> close distance. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, Six, it's about to get one, gnarly. Two, three, four. Um, Any of them snap. slip on the ice? <laughs> one's gonna roll for it, one's not, because you broke this guy's path, but not the other. So, he has to make a dexterity save of 13 or better. Yeah! Which he <laughs> critically <laughs> fails. That's bad. So two of the uh, remaining orcs charge into the cave after the mage. One of them... Gets right up next to you. He's brandishing his great axe. He's carrying it in two hands. He's holding it above his head, ready to swing on you. The other, as he's running in, actually falls prone and slides into you like he's sliding into first. He actually holds <laughs> on to his axe, but he'll have to use the remaining part of his turn to stand up. So Goodbye, this guy guys. will not be able to damaged. attack you. Yeah, dude, you're in some stuff back Why there, Why are you man. already damaged? I can't remember. How much, are, how much HP do you have? 21 out of 26. Yeah, you have 26. Oh, wait, maybe that's because I did that from when Thomas hit me. Well, when did Thomas hit you? Oh, we punched you in the nose. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> he laughs. That was a couple of days ago, wasn't it? Yeah, but we're not in a long... Well, yeah, but at any point that one of those days passes, you could roll a hit die to not be face punched. All right, let me. Which is the thing that you should I told you to block. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, that was practice for today. <laughs> Instead of a fist, you have to dodge an axe. So you're 25 yeah. of 26? Yep. All right. The orc Peace, dude. swings his axe upon you. What's your AC? Well, 
<clears throat> 12 because I don't have major armor on. He oh. misses. You actually manage to step out of the way. That's amazing, see? They're both Tom up on you, though, for next round. For the other three and three... One, two, three orcs on Thomas and two orcs on Carmen. First Carmen. Oh, fuck. That's a hit. <laughs> Second Carmen. That's a miss. So I take 11 damage. Yep. The first orc swings into you with his great axe and he cleaves right into your armor. You feel the blade pierce your armor and barely slice up your side. The next three orcs on Thomas. You are 14, right, Thomas? Yeah. So the first orc uh, manages to actually miss. He swings wide. The second follows suit. <laughs> <laughs> they're actually distracting each other. It's getting worse and worse as they're swinging at you and they can't hit you. Maybe you're too intimidating to see up close that was the orc's turn Thomas fool Carmen watch this one die I aim for that one directly the one that's kind of adjacent between the two of us yeah and Let's see. that work um, oh. roll once more because you're also uh, in dim light. I am rolling. I'm doing the... Reckless? should be even because it's reckless. Oh, okay. I haven't attacked yet, but um, that's... So they didn't have it on me last time. But I am currently going to do that. So, so rolling even, you roll a 20 to hit. A 20 is definitely a hit, and you bludgeon him for 10 damage. He doesn't go down, but you do... That does not include my rage, Okay, how much Stabless. damage is your rage? Two more? Two yeah, more, so and 12. it's all psychic damage, not bludgeoning. All psychic. So it's kind of like a shadow spirit. matters spirit. less for orcs, but it's cool for right flavor. Through. Yep. So it just whiffs right through him. He's like 12 damage. He screams and grabs it. Like, and... You want to do anything else? Or get ready to take it for next round. Uh... I wish I could do more. I have zero other things I can do. Carmen. Okay, I'm going to summon my magical keg back here as a bonus action. Your spiritual mm -hmm. keg? Yep. I will spit on this one. That's what I'll do. Yep, there you go. <laughs> and I'm going to smash this dude with the keg. So let me cast the keg. Okay, so that Shink. is a bonus action. And you get a free attack with it. I cast keg. I hit him for six. You Ugh. do. It um and I hit, appears it drops behind from the him sky right on. And <laughs> it looks weird and, because it's just a keg floating in the air and acting as if it's being swung on a handle, and it slams him right in the face. And then I can I can move it too, right? Um, as a bonus action. Oh, I can't move you it. Someone does a bonus it? action, so. Yep. Well, you did swing with it. As a bonus action on your turn. So next turn, I can move the weapon 20 feet. Should have summoned it like here instead. Uh, no, I want it there because I'm going to I'm gonna try to do, do something things. with it. Yeah, I'm going to try to do things. Um, and then I'm going to also punch him in the face with my Warhammer. Oh, God. So you're focusing the same one. With... Wow. Yep. And I do it for... I punch oh. him in the face for four damage, unfortunately. You hit him really well. You strike true, but he moves just out of the way, and you check his shoulder with your mace for another four damage. Oh, mace? Whoa, mace! Wait, what do you have? Pussies. I use a warhammer, bro. Okay, warhammer. <laughs> <laughs> Arthur, I am going to cast Misty Step. You need to get the fuck out of there, man. Yeah. This guy back Run. here is the one that's been barking orders. Only you can tell that, Carmen. Which guy? This one back here. Oh, yeah. He needs to go. Misty step. And that does not trigger... 
No. Any opportunity attack. So one, two, three, four, five. Does it have to be somewhere you can see? Yep. Okay, so that is somewhere you can see. Now up here outside the cave entrance. Uh, and I'm going to move, take my movement. Uh, one, it two, runs. three, <laughs> four, five. Oh, uh, that's too bad. Oh, if you no. stayed where you were, it would be much better. <laughs> He's too late. He's down the dark kill side. You are now in the dark. By himself. <laughs> I guess I did say run. <laughs> oh, wait, I lie. 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30. So the dark ends about uh, a little away from you. You're in the dim light. Okay. That's okay. my turn. Theodore. Uh, that was a bonus action and movement. Did you have an action? Oh, can I? Yeah. Oh yeah. Oh. Yeah, sure. you can do a thing. Well, I'm just gonna do the the thing you always do. Yeah, I'm just gonna cast fireball. Do you have fireball? No. Yeah, that'd be good better yet. right now. <laughs> kind of better. <laughs> and I guess I kind of misjudged the uh, distance you can see. It looks like you can see about to right here, right about Thomas Ito's row. Right. Yeah, in dim light. This in guy's dim gonna light. get it. This guy got it. It would still be disadvantage. God damn it! That's the second crit that you've rolled that you have to roll again. Oh. Uh, that mm -hmm. is a hit, though. You shoot another firebolt from the dim light, and it explodes. It flashes another bright light around, and you can see um, the carnage that's happening. But you got your friends are still alive. You can hit this guy. Or any guy behind him, you can't hit guys in this row because you can't see them. Correct. Who are you aiming so, at? Well, I guess that guy then. The guy that this, I can see. The this middle guy? guy. Yeah. Okay. And that's enough to actually put him down. He's already been wounded from earlier. Thomas hit him and he goes down. <laughs> Lands We're a lot better than this than I thought we would be. Yeah. I mean, that first part was really bad. Mm -hmm. The nine attacks on one person. Yeah, all those javelins. The fact that they went first is probably the worst part of it. Yeah, that was bad. Theodore. Okay, let's see. I'm going to target this guy right here. All right, the one behind Thomas. He's yep. fighting uh, in a frenzy. My hunters, move my hunter's mark to him and... Uh, 13 hit. 13 is just enough. Nice. Oh, these guys so, are squishy. 10 damage to him. Are you using a um, sharpshooter or no? Oh, right. I was. Uh, is this is counting the sharpshooter in the roll or no? Mm, no. Plus 7 to hit wouldn't it's be odd. sharpshooter. I, uh marked it that I was supposed to be doing sharpshooter. Okay, so you actually would uh, oh, miss on this shot. Okay. The arrow goes wide. <laughs> do you want to do anything else? you want to continue moving so they can't see where you're at? Oh, you know what? I have an inspiration from last game. Can I do that? You can. I'll do that. Uh, I would just get one more roll, right? Correct. Okay, so let me change that so that it doesn't roll twice. If you ever roll twice and you're not supposed to, I just take the first result. Yeah, it's fine. Gotcha. Oof. Uh, you are not inspired today, <laughs> Theodore. Nope. And it's back to the top. However, it's not as scary as it was. There's only six remaining, not nine. No, that's okay. We can do this. So the first two will attack Carmen. We'll stay the same hmm. order. So Come on, first you ugly fucks. There's a 14. Nope. That is a miss. The second swings his great axe at you. Did they roll three times? Yeah. Uh, you doubled yeah. up on the second one. Okay, I doubled up. One of them hit me, though. 
So the second one misses. Now we'll go to Thomas. You've got one, two on you as well. Yep. And they they get have advantage. advantage for reckless. Disadvantage for dim light. No, they have dark. Or vision. they have dark vision. Yeah. So the first one rolls with advantage. We'll roll once, twice. It is a miss. <laughs> It's spit in both your eyes. Not doing well. No, they're not. The second one is a hit or a hit. You, you love to do the weird triple the roll double click. Yeah. I think you, I think my mouse is breaking and it's double clicking everything a lot of times. Mm. <laughs> it does six slashing damage to you, and you take half. Three. 30. Oh, give me the power. The last thing that happens is combat, and unfortunately for Arthur, who didn't realize, these creatures run fast. Really mm -hmm. fast. And in one movement, they catch up to you, Arthur, and they brandish mm -hmm. their great axes. Did anyone slip on the ice? Not this time. The one that did saw it, and he knew better. <laughs> Two attacks on Arthur. Here he sees 12. He's, he might be here. He might not. Arthur. That's Arthur. Already? Oh, there you are. Yeah. I rolled an 11. I think you're 12, right? Yep. And the second attack. Maybe. Did it work? I don't think it worked. No, it did not work. I'm not going to miss technical difficulties. There, there you go. go. 17. Cast 17. Shield. shield. Shield would put you at 17. It would not work. It goes to me, right? It goes to Defender, I thought. No. No. They have to hit 17 or better. So you can save your spell slot. Uh, Motherfuck. And take nine slashing damage as he cleaves in. You dodge out of the way just a bit and you take a pretty deep cut. Thomas. Thomas. So we're going to go back around. You look at these creatures, you see their faces, and they look determined, resolved. They have bloodlust in their eyes. <laughs> and I spit in his other eye. Can't so see. Now though. he has. He has. I know where he is. You know where he is. Yeah. So I'm going to swing with disadvantage and my advantage. So you'll cancel disadvantage. Yeah. I spit in his eye and then I show him the magic. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> and I use one of my inspirations. That's probably smart. There you go. So for 13 psychic damage, this, this bull right That's next. much better. Psychic damages your staff passes through his face. You see blood actually squirt out of his eyes if he's crying blood. <laughs> and I believe you said you don't have any other bonus actions you can use. No, I unfortunately can't do much of anything. Welcome to Barbarian. <laughs> Carmen. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to magic keg this guy in the head. Uh -huh. Right. The one you've already hit twice. Yep. So... How do I magic keg when it's already out without casting it? I think so... you can click the spell function of it. Oh, okay. Did you link the so... spell? Spiritual Makes weapon. an attack as a bonus action. Go ahead and link the spell. Like display in BTT? Yeah. Yep. Boop. And then... I guess there isn't an attack there. Yep, you create and it makes a free one, and then as a bonus action on your turn, you can move the we weapon and repeat the attack against a creature within five feet of it. Right. Is it not in your attack slot on Pult or uh, D and D Beyond? In actions? Yeah. Strike. No, it's not. It's in, in bonus there. action. Oh, is it? Bonus yeah. action, spiritual weapon. You're right. Boop. A six. Did I do it? So oh, I... That was me. Here you go. I punch him in the back of the head with the spiritual weapon. Blah. Oh, weird. The first one was just a DA roll. 
All right. Oh, that's yeah. I just clicked that. That was so, me. That that was, so I hit him in the head you're for seven. Things, man? <laughs> but it's not very confusing. My name's right above it. You keg him, and that's enough to put him down. Okay, and then I run. 5, 10, 15, 20, 25. So, so you will provoke. Opportunity. I will. And he'll swing at you here. And miss. I say, I'm coming, lad. And then I throw a throwing axe at the other guy that's harrowing my mage because that's not cool. The one straight in front of you? Yeah. So I'm going to hand axe that bastard. With a natural and I crit. Leave my mage alone, you mother. <laughs> he now has an <laughs> axe embedded in the back of his, well, in his back. He's still up. Uh, damage to him. I'm like, leave my mage alone, you fuck. Axed him. Damn. Yeah, All right. Dude. That was a good turn, Arthur. I'm coming, Art. Okay. Stay where you are. I'm going to cast Misty Step again. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Stay well, there, where you are. You okay. <laughs> <laughs> He's there running for his life, Carmen. Go hide by Theo. <laughs> Oh, shit. <laughs> they can just catch him and beat him silly. Ah, uh, that's not horrible. No, I'm uh, I'm going to uh, attack that guy with my fireball. He aims a fireball directly at Carmen, shoots <laughs> yeah, it over your head. <laughs> Thank God. But misses. You missed, though, on your shot, and it would be a disadvantage, so roll again. Well, if I miss, do I really have to roll again? Absolutely. Yeah, if you roll crit <laughs> one, then you nuke me in the back. <laughs> eh, not always. I'm not that mean. But he might, I don't know, set your keg on fire or your bag of holding <laughs> What? He would <laughs> rather take fire. fireball. Yeah, no kidding. I'd take it in the face. Protect the keg at all costs. <laughs> Do you want to move? You still have a movement action, Arthur. No, I'm going to stick near the dwarf. Okay. You're kind of in the middle of the dwarf and Thomas Ito. I, I, I'm going to move five up. And go right <laughs> That's behind right. Him. Hug my cute little dwarven ass. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, Mr. Mr. Carmen, I think we're in a little bit of a trouble. Nay, nee, boy, we'd be fine. Theodore. Looks like meat's back on the menu, okay. boys. I am going to <laughs> move back to where I was previously and take another shot. We're going to shoot that guy. And you are doing sharpshooter, right? Uh, not this time, because I noticed that they got hit once. So okay. I'm going to bonus action move Hunter's Mark on there and then give him a shot. Hunter's Mark to this one. And Why did it roll? Oh, wait, advantage. Never mind. So, yeah. You do have yeah, advantage. You're 21 to hit. 21 is a hit for a total of 12 damage. Yep. Will be enough. Plus Hunter's Mark. I think that's what the D6 is for. See, because yeah, it says Longbow piercing. plus Hunter's Mark. Yep. yep, it's on there. 10 plus 2. The 2 is the Hunter's oh, Mark. Oh, yep, the 2 is. Alex knows what he's doing. He's got this all figured out. Yeah, you got that shit all looking up. Official. He knows how to make it sharp. Sure. He knows how I to just, do all that. I'm, I'm like, slash roll 1d20. <laughs> <laughs> Your third orc of the combat goes down. Um, And back to the top. Well, they have changed their focus slightly. So these three are now surrounding Thomas. This one moves up and around to take down Arthur. Yeah. He will move around as not to provoke, although I think he'll just move up here past you. Yeah, I mean, as long as he doesn't leave my reach, he's cool. He doesn't leave your reach, and then he swings. First, we'll go for Arthur. Oh. 12 with a great axe is a hit. It's not a hit. Now you can do the shield. Yes, that's, that's what you do now. <laughs> shield. You see a, a flash of light. <laughs> See, he links it twice, too. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, that's because I cast it, and then I better check ah. to see if I didn't. And the axe bounces off of the shield. The other three orcs will try to take down 
Thomas, which they were they have really good luck in the beginning, but afterwards it's not been so easy. Yeah, they what still have an advantage on you, correct? Do they do have advantage. That's that's kind of where I imagine it's going to come from. So the nineteen is the greatest hit, and I'm always taking the damage of the greatest hit. So you will take twelve slashing damage, or half. Four, six. The second one rolls. Mm. You'll yeah. take another eight slashing damage or halved. And the third one, a flurry of steel around Thomas. Buries itself in his flesh, evidently. You take another 14 or seven. This time they all know what they're doing. For some reason, they can finally hit you. <laughs> you hit like Arthur! <laughs> 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 Your turn, Thomas. All right. Um, I'm going to... Clo uh, let's see. This is the one that I've already cod swallowed. So mm -hmm. I, I'm going to continue with swinging that one. Swinging with the big misties. Oh. And I use my final inspiration. <laughs> if I can swing. There you go. 13 more psychic is damage. is a hit. 13 more psychic damage is enough. What happens when they die of psychic damage? Um, I imagine, like, I just whiff it through him like he's a cloud, but then his splitting migraine just makes the, the nose and ears bleed until he drops to his knees and falls over onto himself. Too bad you oh, can't even see it. Sounds so yeah. horrible. Fuck you, migraines. <laughs> so bad. Carmen. Migraine so bad you die from it. That's yeah. horrible. <laughs> oh. Um, <laughs> do good things. Yeah, I mean, I'm on it, man. So I'm going to... Uh, I'm going to heal the barbarian for my bonus action. You mean the mage. <laughs> So then he gets you get Who are nine you hit healing, points. Like, the barbarian or the mage? Nice. Barbarian. That's the spirit. Oh no. Puts me back up to twenty two. And then I punch this orc in the face with my hammer. <laughs> twenty three. Get the fuck off my mage, you piece of shit. I told you, leave him the fuck alone. That's the first hit he's damage. taken, but you do hit him directly for eight bludgeoning with your war hammer, not your mace. Yeah, war hammer. Do you want to move anywhere? Um, five, ten, yeah, I'll move over here. Okay, so you just move around him. Yep, I just move around him. Arthur. Uh, I looked the orc directly in the eye, and there is definitely <laughs> fear in Arthur's eyes, and he feels a flight or flight, fight or flight. Uh, so he puts his, he raises his finger up, and firebolts him right in the head. Are you and like finger gunning this? Yep. <laughs> pew pew pew. Definitely finger gunning it. <laughs> <laughs> and now you finger gun all your firebolts. Yep. Roll a disadvantage. Homes. A 12 is not enough. You see the flare of light in his eyes as the firebolt goes right past him and he smiles. He bears his large tusk fangs. Guess Theodore. I'm using my last bonus action. Cast Misty <laughs> Yeah. Get the fuck out. You're Get the terrified. Fuck out. Go back in the cave. No kidding. Two, three, four, five. All right. Oh, 20 God. feet away. I told you to stay put. <laughs> and I'm going to take a arrow to this guy. Uh, move my hunter's mark onto him first. Yep, that's a bonus action. Uh, 
That is a definite hit. And a total so of seven, seven damage. damage plus eight is literally enough to take him down. Your nice. fourth orc of the battle. Theodore just counting him up over there. Theodore's our dude, man. This is kind of my uh, territory. Garbage man. <laughs> <laughs> it's like he waits for somebody to get hit and then he shoots him again. Yep. Right. I'm, right. I'm kill stealing in here. Pick up killer. <laughs> <laughs> You, Thomas, hear the orc that's been attacking you from the back. And he says something in orcish that you don't understand, but Carmen understands it. And he says, I guess this is the way it ends. As they both swing on you. Yeah, they're not wrong. Uh, first one misses. Wait, he gets advantage. Swing again. The first one misses. <laughs> Try harder. <laughs> then the second one, the one that's been talking this whole time, oh. hits for a total of four damage or two. <laughs> he lets out a tear. This is so sad. <laughs> I, will let, I will let your mother know <laughs> that you shame her. You can say as you can act. It's your turn. Which one are you swinging Changes on? My the one that's been talking or the other one? Um, it's just yeah, talk either. Talkity talker. And if it comes to it, not that I would. It probably won't because I'm guessing he's going to die to an arrow to the eyeball. I am going to attempt to kill or knock him out rather than kill him. Can you do that with psychic damage? Yep, still a melee attack. Okay. Yeah, I think you're right because you could do it with magic weapons. Oh my god. So, uh, I cleave him through the nose. I just uh, just drive it up through his head. So, a total of nine bludgeoning damage. He's actually still up, though. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I don't think he's been hit yet. You hit him so hard, though, you can see the blood dripping down his fangs and his teeth. And that's you. Go ahead, Carmen. I'm going to move the magic keg into this guy. And smash mm -hmm. him with the keg as a bonus action. I like that you're kind of in the position to now flank him and move up at the same time. Surround mm -hmm. him on all sides with your keg. <laughs> Sorry, dude. Yeah. Um, the keg so, over. keg. Did I get him? Yeah. 21 to hit? Yeah, you definitely Sweet. hit him for 9 force damage. And then I Spreading move... Spreading out the damage I, evenly over here. And then I move this way... And punch him in the face with my hammer. Let's see. Warhammer. Bow. Wow. For nine damage. I like how your one-handed <laughs> damage is better than it would have been two-handed. Yeah, that happens. <laughs> um, again, that's enough. You guys are mopping the floor with these orcs. <laughs> yeah, he's about to die to a Theodore arrow. <laughs> or an Arthur Sorry, Firebolt. Dude. Arthur, it is your turn. You cannot see him, though. Actually, you don't even know where he is. You couldn't even pick him. You just hear us fighting over here. There's a pile of dead orcs. <laughs> can I can I see this guy right here? No, you cannot. That's what I mentioned. Um, I'm going to slowly walk back into the cave. Does your spiritual oh, the, weapon the emit walk. light, Carmen, or no? I don't know. I don't think it does. It doesn't say that it does. You cast light so, on it. I yeah, always I see it as like a does. translucent type of thing. Yeah, it's yeah, more of a it's ghost. Just glowing. A... Yeah, it makes me think of light. Yeah. Arthur I runs back into the cave. That. And I'll ready my action to, if anything comes into the light, I'll cast Firebolt on it. Uh, anything? Any, uh, uh... Anything. <laughs> 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 I'm guessing you meant any enemy. Yeah, like I'm geared up. Okay. Any orcs. Theodore. Parting uh, shot? Yep, I'm going to do one more shot. I'll actually do sharpshooter on this one just because it's the last one I see. Okay. Let's see. Uh, Hunter's Mark, bonus action move, Hunter's Mark over. 
Does a 15 hit? A 15 is enough. And with that okay, kind of damage... Jeez Louise. Sharpshooter's kind of the opposite <laughs> of sharpshooter. It's more of like a power shot. Yeah. Where you just heave and hope. <laughs> you, you pull the string back to the almost breaking point. I, if I this is, it's going it to blast kind of, It's a very accurate shot. But it's not. It's less accurate. Yeah. Well, it's it's like if you're trying to hit something for sure, you aim for the body. This is more like you're aiming for the head. So it ha yeah. uh, has a better chance of going over the head, mm -hmm. but then it also has a better chance of getting in the eye. There you go. Yeah. Sure. Headshot. That makes it. sense. And you just ignore, as you predicted, like, Thomas, cover. he went down to an arrow. Not Thomas, the orc. <laughs> yeah, I was like, oh man. <laughs> what just happened? Well, that was that was better than I thought it would be. Way better. Mm, ah, Yarko gave me another inspiration. Yeah, that's what I wrote to you. You didn't see it? I didn't see it. Ah. Re re log. <laughs> now there you go. There you go. Yeah, I could use that. Mopped up these useless fucks. Uh. Where are the rest? Hey, we need those. <laughs> what are you doing? <laughs> I, but first, let's go through their pockets and see if they have any Heck, money. No, we're gonna. I'm gonna stack them up with some wood, like scarecrows, all around the mouth of the cave, <laughs> looking out. They will be our sentries. Oh, uh, okay. <laughs> Grizzly Scarecrows times nine. Jeez. What? I'll go you down and uh, retrieve my trap. Okay. You go retrieve your trap. No no damage done to it at all. Nice. How much money do they have? Oh, yeah. Money. Money. Let's go they ahead have and nine some. axes and javelins. I mean, they definitely true. have um, about 21 javelins total. <laughs> Whoa. You pull three of them out of Thomas. Yeah. <laughs> can, I, can I put them in the bag of holding? Yeah, absolutely. Nice. You find nine great axes. They're not very well made. Iron, not steel. And, I mean, they, they do what they're meant to do. Yeah, they're not pretty, but they get the job done. Mm -hmm. A lot of them are chipped and broken on the edges. So Sharp you're saying I can't sell them for a lot of money. Not a lot, but probably not half cost either. Nine. Great axes, twelve. Javelins. But if you were a smith or you have a smith, you could fix them up before selling at least. Yeah. Or forge them down into raw material. Raw material wouldn't mm. be as useful. Just because um, smith. The price point of why things are so expensive is how long it takes to make them. Ah, uh, okay. At least that's yeah. how the DM guide explains it. <laughs> I'm not a smith, so... I'm the other kind of dwarf. Okay. I'm gonna go lay down in this bed right here. <laughs> Lick <laughs> my wounds. I'm also gonna go back and... I'm going to spend some time setting up one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, nine scarecrows. I don't know what I'm to gonna, say to you. I'm going <laughs> to use a good berry, get uh, 10 berries, give three to everybody, and give an extra one to Arthur, because he's just uh, uh, needing those, it more. Those two? Yep. Yeah, one hit point, point each. each. So, uh, do you want to eat it now, or? Thank you, friend. I appreciate. I'll, I'll have three also. snacks. Yeah, I, I, I just eat it all now. No, no, no. After your short rest, the rest of the night, just this is one of those times you're going to level up in the middle of a game. Nice. Hey, short rest. Hit level five. Should we? One hit dice. Uh, I use one hit dice. Take you don't rest. get any bonus hit points or only the parts you would gain. So, so if right your now max I am hit down. Point goes up, you'll get whatever the max, whatever that is. 
Okay. Wait, so I'm, I'm currently 22 hit points below max. So I will still be 22 hit points below max. Nope. You'll gain whatever you get. Yeah, that's what I mean. So I'm yep. at 23 out of 45. I'm going to be at 30 out of... Yeah, if you're gaining 7 roll a max, you'll gain 7 current. Let's see. I'm just... Oh, God. That's great. It low. Wait, are we rolling for character? No, I up? rolled because oh. I, I um, did the short rest, but for some reason it didn't add the hit points when I oh. rolled the die. So I just rolled it and rolled 20, and that's what I got because that's stupid. Actually. Correct. So let's level oh, up. Oh, I get fast movement, so I increase my speed by 10, and I get to attack twice. This is awesome. All right. So I, what I get. Extra warrior. I don't know if you guys want to eat the good berries now or save them. They're good for a uh, full long rest, so I think it's wheat. Yep. I just ate them now. Full... <laughs> okay. just you will make more berries. Me. Yeah, no kidding. I wish you'd get fat eating three in a day. <laughs> oh, that would be funny. Like uh, Fable? Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Another pie. <laughs> right. Oh, I can destroy undead now. Yeah. Mm. And then short rest. And you're leveling up, Matt? Yeah. I Don't just forget that you get two new spells yeah. to add to your spell book. Oh, nice. I got third level spells. What? What? Yep. I just took fireball. <laughs> fireball instantly. That would have helped okay. a lot in this situation. Yeah. Yep. So guys, we need to find a way to make more money real bad because... Oh, and I didn't tell you how much gold and stuff they had on them. So I'll go right. over that too. The gold they had... Let's go ahead and roll a D100. Okay. They actually had quite a bit of gold. 89 gold in total you find on all of them. Most Ooh. of it was on the guy that was talking. He had a big pouch of gold. Just fat sack. Why'd you roll a D hundred? He has a big fat sack. Yeah. Is they roll a time I should be taking sky right? No, I no. don't say you to roll a D hundred. <laughs> oh, okay. Who's rolling a D hundred? I I said roll a D hundred, so I said okay, and I did it. But he rolled a D hundred. Eighty nine is better than mine, so we're good. Yep. Yeah, that's good. Yeah, quit fucking it up. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry. But I do want okay. someone to roll a D hundred. Oh, somebody not you. All right, it can be anyone. Someone else roll it. Who's going to roll the highest? Not nah, me. Uh, I think Matt will. Matt will. Do it, Matt. Oh, man. How do you Press roll? Pressure's on. <laughs> Slash. A little roll. die to the left. Click it. And then go to the D100 and click it. Oh, oh there you oh. go. There you go. Steve, I was right. Psychic. You were <laughs> right. <laughs> woo, woo, woo. All right, Ryan. What do we get for 94. A scroll. <laughs> <laughs> a scroll of summon harem. It's actually kind of sad because you rolled so well. Oh, uh, see, I knew it. Scroll. It's not a scroll, but you do find some sort of potion on one of the creatures. Ah, uh, fucking potion. Uh, can I... Lick it! Um... That's how you figure it out. You dip a little finger in it and taste it, and then you're supposed to know. I mean, I can, like, can I use the, my ritual as uh, yeah. identify? It would take 10 minutes more than the ritual time to cast. Yeah, I'm definitely going to. I think identify ritual. takes an hour. So an hour and 10 minutes. whoop -dee. I think. Yeah. I'm not 100% sure on that. You can correct me if I'm wrong. Do, 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 do. 11 minutes is a casting time. 11 um, As a ritual or just... But let me see the ritual. No. Yeah, it's it's normally one minute, so you add so 10 11 minutes, minutes to it. Is a ritual. Okay, yeah. so it's only one minute. I was way wrong. Only one by hour, 59 minutes. Minute, yeah. You know. <laughs> you take the time to figure out what it is, and when you finish the cast of your spell... You're relieved. You take a deep breath of uh, relief because you find out it's a potion of poison. Oh, good Ooh. thing you didn't taste it. <laughs> just chug it. <laughs> Coward. As they told you. <laughs> just taste it. It'll be fine. 
It is a potion of Carmen's ale. <laughs> Fuck you, Tom. <laughs> no, Mr. Thomas, I believe this is something uh, uh, much worse than uh, Carmen's ale. Hey, how would you know, Art? You never even had any ale. Uh, you, you speak blasphemy. <laughs> Have the ale. Here, uh, uh, I, I'll look at the ranger. I, go, I, I can't remember his name. Theodore? Theodore. Uh, that is it's Theodore under Huxtable. his face. <laughs> yeah, it's you, his you, Mr. Theodore, why don't you hold on to this? Sure. Don't drink it. I'm not stupid enough to put everything in my mouth. <laughs> Unfortunately. You are not a dwarf. Seriously, Tom. <laughs> <laughs> you are getting stronger by the day, Carmen. Literally, this time. You do look like you buffed up overnight. I, it's the ale I've been drinking. It's good for you. Mm. That'll put the pubes on your pubes. I he puts the hair on your beard. Mm. Oh, from inside, these scarecrows are a bad idea. There are nine orc butts. <laughs> 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 but pretty sure no one will come calling. Right? Feel like something is going on. Ryan is not talking. I'm letting you guys talk. Oh, okay. Well, I, I uh, assumed technical wild animals. Josh wild animals. Josh talking. That's what you to, found. Uh, <laughs> wild animals may come to snack on the dead corpses, but mm, they still smell like orc. Probably will be a while. Possibly. And if they do, they are distracted. It's the smell of blood that attracts them. Hmm. That is how I have attracted all of you to come hang around me, you bunch of wild animals. <laughs> uh, Mr. Thomas, maybe we should uh, dispose of these bodies a, a different way so that we mm. don't attract. But they will be guarding us. Uh, but I, I, very well. So do, 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 do. I'm going to grab my torch and I light up one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Eight, nine. <laughs> Don't... Wait, there. What are you doing? You lit them on fire? Yeah, Arthur was uncomfortable with them. What the so fuck, I'm... man? Seriously, that's that's <laughs> sick. You got a problem. Oh No, we are the... cleansing. No, uh... Uh, we got to put out these flames. The smell is... Ugh, God. It smells like bad barbecue. Once, once the hair is gone, <laughs> it will not smell so bad. The that's worst part true. about this heavy, dank night is that the... Odor and the smoke is just rolling into the cave at this point. Oh, <laughs> yeah, geez, I'm gonna come out of the cave. Yeah, I'm gonna use control flame to start putting out the bodies. Yes, just leave them singeing. Good idea. There are Put out all the fire. Now they are degree burns over every corpse. Hair is gone. Some the ice is uh, melted. The ice is all <laughs> melted. There's a little puddle of water now outside, which is starting to actually refreeze slowly just because of how cold it is. It's kind of slushy and bloody and ash and char. Oh, sick. That's no one would ever want to walk into this cave <laughs> that kind <laughs> of entrance. Exactly. We I have discovered down, the I, secret. I go to sleep. You're going to have trouble sleeping in the cave for a few hours. Well, I try. I do my best. I drink myself into oblivion. You can do that. All right. <laughs> I have a sleep aid with me at all times. Uh, uh, Mr. Mm. Carmen, this would be an appropriate time to thank you uh, for coming to my aid. Aye, lad. Speak nothing of it. We're traveling companions. That's what we do. Yes. You are the bait, we are the rescuers. <laughs> Nay, we all look after each other. That's how this works. But you're welcome, lad. I do appreciate it. Nothing and I'll to just it. go to the backmost part of the cave and uh, try to read my book. 
Okay. And then the rest of the night will pass. You'll get your short rest, which you've already done and rolled for, I think. Unfortunately, yep. yes. If anyone uh, does want to roll any more hit dice, they can. Remember that they right. only restore half of them on a long rest. How do you roll a hit it's, die? What's my arcane recovery at? It's right under now. short rest. Click short rest. Okay. And then when it wants you to confirm, it'll ask you how many hit dice you want to roll. Oh, okay. You have to uh, roll them still, but you can click the box that you're using them. Oh, it tells you roll hit die. You can click a little thing. Yep, it'll do it. Math for you. <laughs> I was in it, hit, so I don't have it to worry about that. It did not do the math for me. Yeah, it did. Uh, yes, it did. <laughs> it did. Over here? Oh, sad. <laughs> Gosh, yeah. <laughs> well, okay. I'm still. I'm all right. You can roll more than one, though. I well, that was my second one. That's okay. I'm only one down now. You have a total of five. Yeah. That's oh, cool. you're only one hit point down. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I can't prepare spells on a short rest. I have to wait for a long rest, right? Correct. You Thank gain you. one spell slot you can prepare because you leveled up. Which means you can prepare one spell. One extra spell. But I can't prepare any of my spells until a long rest? You also gain one new spell you can prepare. Uh, okay. Because cool. when you level up, you can prepare a number of spells equal to your level. Oh, you're right. I got you. Plus okay, your modifier. So I can prepare one more spell. One new spell, yeah. And then on a long okay. rest, you can re-prepare everything. Oh, what's Spirit Shroud? I don't know, never heard Arthur, of it. Arthur, would you like to do the Dance of Victory with me? Um, Mr. Thomas, I, I don't know the Dance for Victory. and uh, Well, you watch and learn, a... and then do it just like me. It uh, is awesome. I am showing you Dance of Victor. Oh, wow. That's awesome. What? Why do you have to move your uh, gl gl glutes like that? <laughs> they flex <laughs> wonderfully. You flex glutes, you flex peck. That's the only way to do Dance of Victory. Um, perhaps I'll... Uh, to take off to your robe and do Dance of Victory with us. Uh, Mr. Thomas, I, I don't believe this is the time to start dancing. We do dance of victory at victory. This is time. Uh, this is your tradition and, and, and not mine, Mr. Thomas. I, I respectfully decline. Well, then, I will do dance of victory closer. Cover both of us with victory. <laughs> I can't. <laughs> <laughs> I probably, probably laughed. I, say yeah. I, can't. <laughs> I can I can cast animate dead. You That's have wild. nine corpses. <laughs> <laughs> wow! Care, make care. make scarecrow wiggle. They will also do dance of defeat. <laughs> I didn't know clerics could do that. Of course they can. That's wild. Speak with dead. Animate dead. You mean Merritt could have been helping out Arthur or er, Art again? Merritt was not a cleric. Time. Oh, that's right. Yeah. He just pretended to be one. Oof, this is hard. Animate dead or spirit guardians? Well, you have both of them. You can just prepare one of them. Right, but I'm saying if I prepare animate dead, I can do it now. Now would be the time. <laughs> How many times are you going to have nine orc corpses around you? <laughs> that's true, but I don't know if that's really Carmen's style. Well, you do what you do. Uh, he's a spirit guardian guy. Make them do dance of failure. I mean, you have a necromancer coming up. <laughs> yeah, I don't have to mess with that now. <laughs> future you. Yep, future me. All right, I'm going to turn in for a little bit of sleep. I'll see do you, you not do want to do the victory dancing either? No, I'm sleeping now. Victory sleeping and victory drinking before the sleeping, but mostly the sleeping. Hey, Arthur, one, what's two, your three. AC with uh, Mage Armor? Um, 15. 15? Hmm. I believe. 
Yep. Sorry, I'm trying to pick a spell. What's that? I'm just trying to pick a spell. One of the oh. ones I can cast is Bark Skin, which means yeah. that you cannot have an AC less than 16 regardless of what armor you're wearing. But if he uses shield, it only goes up to a 17, right? Because it doesn't actually change his AC. Yeah. So shield would get him much better, yeah. Shield wouldn't be useful anymore. Right. As useful. Be plus one. Yeah. All right. I, 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 got, I do have time. mage armor in it. So. Okay. <laughs> and that lasts for uh, two days, I think, right? Right. I just got Revivify, too, but I don't have the component to cast it, so there's that. So did you stash all the gold in? Um... Yeah, I just put it in, the, like, the communal gold pile or whatever. Okay. In the bag? Yeah, in the bag. And how much do we have right now? Uh, Not that much. We have 126 gold. Mm -hmm. We might have, have to take a, a job at the the next town. We do not stop it down. They waste too much time. I roll over. I agree. <laughs> we should uh, bypass I the just, next town. I just look away and roll over it up against <laughs> the wall. <laughs> We're already on this journey. Right. Good night, gentlemen. It's, it is the morning, though. Oh, it is the morning now? It's uh, nice. All... There. This is kind of all going on during the night. Okay. Y'all turn so in, you have your short rest, Theodore does a watch, it doesn't matter, nothing happens. <laughs> Nobody comes into our warded cave. Your disgusting, <laughs> stank, awful cave of awfulness. The night yeah, passes, the morning comes, you've refreshed yourselves, um, picked a new spell or two, prepared one new spell. And the rest of the journey is about a day and a half from here to Bryn Shander. We have one more night to pass. We don't need an end. You're, you're full health, everybody? Everyone but Pretty me, much. Joe, and Arthur. I, I'm just one point down right now. <clears throat> I am just a point, Jai. Oh, Arthur, are you, you're not updated on roll 20. Right, or is that on D and Beyond? Like, it looks like on roll twenty, it's showing your health bar. It's oh, I'm twenty six out of thirty two here. I forgot to update that. Too many things to update. Yeah. Oh yeah, I didn't update mine too. Max, max, uh, forty four now. At seventy seven, forty four. Wish I'd seventy seven hit. So I guess I would. Take a short rest, hit die. Let's see. Yeah, I'm gonna. Use you don't this. have to roll it then, because if you need one. Yeah. You're uh, no, because my hit points went up. But you get whatever they went up by. Yep. So, so say you, you get four hit points, you also gain that four from the leveling. Oh, why? Why is my my max is thirty two though? So I did. Hit, yeah, so I'm 26 out of 32. 32. Well, you were 26 well, you out of 27, max. right? No. I was were... like 21 out of. I can't remember. Yeah, so if you were. I think you were 25 uh, out of 26 because you used yeah. a hit die. And then you just you... go 31 out of 32 now without rolling hit dice. It would come down to whether you used your hit die first or you leveled up first, but you should have more hit, hit points than that. You should be right, like we'll 30 out of 31. 32. Yeah, 31. if you were one down before you leveled up, you're one down when you level up. Mm -hmm. All right. Save All right. those hit dice. All right, now that we got that out of the way. What's your max, guys, for hit points? 32. 44. 55. There you go. Okay. 48. Yep, right in there. I like that everyone has different hit points this campaign. Mm -hmm. The last one, a lot of people were about the same. We all had the same because we were all D8 with the same plus con mod. two to con or something. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I like the varied hit points. 
What's Me too. Way? That's why we should roll for everything. <laughs> Every time. Maybe next campaign. Yes. Behold the mayhem. Mm. As the morning comes and the sun rises, the snow has stopped falling, the sky has cleared out a bit, and you can see the beautiful skies of the great north expanse. And the mountains... Uh, the sun comes up over the mountains slowly, and slowly some of the snow, the tops of it, start melting, and it gives a sheen to the entirety of this uh, region. Glisten. As you're headed to Rinchander. It'll take you another day and a half to get there. Uneventful day and a half. So if oh. you have anything you want to do in that meantime, you can. Mm, da, da, da. Is there? I mean, are there like any cold little creeks and rivers and stuff? Oh, for sure. And a lot of them to, are still flowing. The larger ones, quick, for sure. Quick bath. It's freezing oh, though. It just got real yeah. dark one side. He doesn't care. He's uh, got the cold under. Triton. I love it. I go inside and swim, swim, swim to get clean. I smell like orc, and so do you guys. You should come in and take bath with me. I'm good. Come get clean. No, you smell like... Well, you smell mostly like Theodore. Yes. Carmen. Mm hmm You also know, when you wake up, that you now have cold resistance. You just know intuitively that this is something your ring... Uh, gives you. Oh, sweet. I'll be sad to see you go. You're a useful wee little trinket. But promises <laughs> are promises. You talking to Arthur? Hey, <laughs> 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 uh, my ring is more useful than Arthur. <laughs> you say that? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I do. <laughs> Uh, uh, he is just like pup, puppy dog eyes. <laughs> <laughs> I just, I kind of like say it, but not in a mean way. Like I have a smile on my face. Sort of. How can you say that in not a mean <laughs> way? <laughs> <laughs> well, he's already had a conversation about giving shit. Yeah. And dishing it out and taking it. That's the way that you do it when you're adventuring pals. You just give each other shit. But after mostly. last night's offense, my, my, I, my, I, I just have puppy dog eyes. Because I feel bad about not contributing more. Oh, don't worry, Arthur. You'll come into your own. You have some grown up to do, but you'll be all right. I mean, how old are you, anyways? Um, He's like seven. How old is he? I know he was young. He was younger. He's like. I think you said something around twenty-seven. Yeah. Wait, ah, you're just a wee lad. Not regular seven. <laughs> uh, I am very confused. <laughs> It's, it's all right, Thomas. Uh, my age does not matter right now. You're still behind the ears. You'll come into your own. Don't you feel bad about it? Everyone has to find their adventure legs. Mm. I suppose so, but it's, it's like uh, jumping out of a frying pan and into the fire. Uh, we're, like, we're like jumping off trail and into river, and I throw you over one shoulder. Oh, no. <laughs> no. Mr. Thomas, put me down. Put me down, Mr. Thomas. I Hi, will. Tom. Do not worry. Leave the lad be. <laughs> he didn't need to go for a swim. Uh, all right. You may keep your warmth. And I put you down on the shore. And then I cannonball. You jump in, an explosion of water right. from where you land. Uh, give me an athletics to do a good cannonball. I want to see that belly flop. Nice. Kapuff. Does that work? No. Mm, that way. That's it. Oh, yeah, you do a great <laughs> Uh Yeah, some of the water splashes back onto Arthur. It's freezing cold water you would not oh. want to have been thrown in there <laughs> mr thomas oh my god this is so cold i i dunk my head underwater and then i 
shout so that he can still see that I'm talking underwater. Come in, join the water! <laughs> and that's how you spend part of your afternoon mm -hmm. before the, the last leg to Bryn Shander. The next day is just as a clear, no snow again, and you can see the town of Bryn Shander finally come into view. It's nestled between a couple mountains, a little bit of a valley, and... Hey, Carmen, are we bypassing this one, too? <laughs> no? I'd be interested in bypassing it. Yeah, of course you would. <laughs> this is our destination! This God, is, this is the town we're supposed to go to. <laughs> this is the whole reason we are coming to, to the make, north. I have to make a stop here. I have a delivery to make, and sad mm -hmm. news to deliver. I thought you were going to give a ring. Aye, but only because the bearer is dead, and this is his next of kin. So, uh, I bad news that's... and a gift. Uh, what do you think we might find this, Mr. Sirak? Somewhere in Big Town. Who was Morak's kin here again? Ogrith Brighthelm. Oh, that's great. I... First, let's go find Ogrith Brighthelm. Morak said that uh, he'd be hospitable to us. Mm. Okay. Mm -hmm. But yeah, you see the uh, city come into view, and it is a pretty large town, much bigger than the last two that you've seen, or three, I guess, because you saw Fireshear and Hundlestone and uh, Nightstone. Those are the last three cities you've seen. This is much bigger. It's walled on the outside. The walls are about 30 feet high, and you see a bunch of different towers at different points of the walls, and it's built in a big circle. You can see the southern side, and a total of about four towers that you can see from this uh, view. Do we have a map? Yeah, I'll get you a map. I got you a map. So remember, it was Countess Century from Stormhaven who dropped the rocks on Nightstone. Countess what? Yes. Thank you. Century. <laughs> Thank you. I just had coffee delivered. Best nice. Time. Yep. So yeah, Countess on... Century from Stormhaven. And her floating castle of Lindemal, Armal, dropped rocks on Nightstone. There you go. Don't run from the style. <gasps> Whoa, look at that map. Eyes. This is Big the town city. of Bryn Shander. Yep, we're coming from Southwest map. Holy cow. And yeah, you're coming up the, uh, I think it's the 10 trails. Let me find that map again. I think it's the southwest gate. Nope. Yep, you're coming up the ten trails to Bryn Shander towards the southwest gate. You're coming from the uh, southwest. The uh, things that you can see from this angle is there's no high buildings or palisades. There's no castles towering over the walls. Everything seems to be tucked behind all the walls, but you do see trails of smoke everywhere coming out of all the different chimneys of all the different buildings, and they're filling oh, the air. Okay. For a minute, I thought that was going to go poorly. I was like, trails of smoke? Oh, God, we're too late. <laughs> <laughs> Not this time. Okay. I don't know how you expect to find anyone in there. Well, I don't know. We will go and make our introductions. Probably I'll ask the watch and see if they know who Ogram Brighthelm is. Uh, unlikely, but perhaps we can find... Uh, Bub houses and inns, and you'll probably have to take some time trying to track this person down. I. Luckily, you have strong men like me to make all proper inquisitions. Oh, you fuck. Pardon? Nothing. All right. Let us go make noise and ruckus until somebody answers us. Uh, uh, Mr. Thomas, uh, uh, Let's let's ease into this situation before we cause a ruckus. Yes. 
Let us. Did you bring one of the corpses with us? No. No, neither did I. That cave is well protected. Okay. Um, let's see. Ooh. <laughs> well, I did buy a flute. I have it in my gear now. Oh, great. So, when we get close, I will begin to make flute noises. <laughs> To announce, oh God. announce the coming of the king. I, I, I quickly run up behind him and, and I start like kind of patting him on the back. Uh, Mr. Thomas, uh, let's settle down. Uh, let's not to make too much noise. As to uh, we are travelers on traveling road. There is no reason to be sneaking around like sneaky thieves. Uh, Mr. Theodore, uh, Mr. Carmen, please help. Tom, that sounds horrible. You have no taste in music. I will evidently neither do you. Correct. It sounds all wrong when not played underwater. Well, we're not underwater, so please could you refrain kindly. You take much practice. Oh. It took me many years to learn how to play horn proper. There was only one note in that damn horn. So it's all about rhythm. What oh, do you mean only oh. one note? Yes, yeah, uh, uh, Mr. Thomas, let's just you put the flute away. And... That is like seeing ten colors and saying only one color. Fine, fine tune. If, if all the colors are the same color as shite, it's all one color. It's like seeing a blue and a green and a teal and just saying they are all blue. There's many more than one note. It just takes a more precise ear than you have. But let's wave our arms and see if we can get the attention of someone who will help us find our I mean, way. I, well, we'll just go and talk to the guards at the gate. They usually know something about something. If they don't know <laughs> who Ogram Wrighthelm is, they might know where we can inquire. Very good. Yes, must be public housing record of taxes or something. I or a bar where most of the doors hang out. That's the racist. I, but I'm a door, so I can say that shite. You can't. That's. <laughs> <laughs> okay. He puts the flute away as you guys march towards the front gates, and the gate is pretty large. You could definitely, uh, get a few wagons through at the same time it's about 20 feet high and 20 feet wide and it's got two guard towers that buttress up against the sides on the outside you see two dwarven guards standing watch uh, as people come or leave but you haven't seen much foot traffic lately mm. oh it is ogre bright helm right there nay <laughs> shut your shut your <laughs> mouth you're gonna get us in trouble <laughs> You walk up to the two dwarves. One is a dwarf with a great black beard, the other with a fiery red beard. The one with the red beard says, Well met, travelers. I hey, well met yourself. I'm doing all right. What I'm brings you to Brinshandar? I have news for Ogrim Brighthelm from his kin, Morak. Or is his, was it Morak? Or? Morak. Yeah, from his kin, Morak. I'm wondering if you can point me in the right direction. Well, I usually have a speech prepared for everyone. Let me go through that real quick, and then I'll let you know. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> he smiles. He looks up and around. Would you like musical accompaniment? He looks up in your eyes, too. Well, really up, because you're pretty tall. Keep your fingers and extremities under wraps, lest Oral bite them off. Mind your tempers, and you'll be most welcome here. Have you brought any goods to sell? The market lies straight ahead through the gate. Craving a warm drink? May I recommend a drop of Firebeard's Fire Brandy? It's sold only at Kelvin's Comfort. It's located on your right as you enter the market square. He points straight down the road, which goes all the way to the center of town. You can see people coming and going. Uh, a few carts here and there. People pushing wheelbarrows. Uh, there's a lot of commotion on in the streets here. A lot of activity. And 
And to get to your question about Algric Brighthelm, I hear that he uh, frequents Kelvin's Comfort. You can probably find him there. He's usually there at the night. Oi, thank you. You got it. Come on in. Mm. He just puts his hand up so you can walk through. I do. And uh, I pass by it. I am very kind of you, sir. He just good. smiles. And you walk into the big city. It's not huge, but it's pretty big. A few thousand people. Where are you going? Straight to the market? Let's go get the, the fire sun. whiskey. I go to the bar. Is it uh, daylight's out still? Or? Yeah, you guys are here midday, around 11 a.m. Perhaps we could should look around before going to the bar, since he said that he would be in there after hours. Well, we can begin to be getting brandy drunk. Hey, we need some time to get in the proper frame of mind. I mean, what else would you like to do? Perhaps we can sell some of these javelins and axes before we get there. That may be a good idea. That's a start. Do we need to get more supplies as well? Uh, I don't think we need more rations. You've been taking care of feeding us the whole way here, so... Yeah, uh, perhaps we'll go sell these first. For uh, your drinking money. All right. For drinking money. All right, of course. Okay, so you're going to mm -hmm. go to the smith. Mm -hmm. um, but we do not need to all go together. Nah, I mean, we should split the party. All right. <laughs> It will be more fun this way. Uh, I'll accompany uh, Mr. Carmen. <laughs> <laughs> he called dibs. <laughs> yeah, that, was, that wasn't hard. <laughs> Very fine. I will go and go to market and see what we can do. All right. So we'll start with what Carmen say, and Arthur. Woodsman, keep an eye on him. Okay. I'll meet you at the bar. <laughs> Alex, you sound so enthused. <laughs> he's like, okay. <laughs> he first he doesn't like cities, and now he's stuck here with this guy. <laughs> so we will find huge group of people. So you part ways from each other, the two separate groups. Uh, Thomas and Theodore are headed straight down the road Ooh. to the center market. We lost Theodore for a second. Carmen <laughs> like, and... out. <laughs> he really left. <laughs> <laughs> Carmen nope, and I'm Arthur, here. you actually divert your path pretty quickly because you hear the sound of pounding metal off in the uh, western quadrant of this city. You take a left here because that's about when you hear the sound. and You could pretty easily make your way without asking anyone how to get to the smiths just by following the sounds. And they carry over the the still air around the city. All the different sounds carry. But the first uh, smith you come by is called Black Iron Blades. It's uh, burned into the wooden sign out front. And it's, it's a little shop with a little forge and anvil out back that's only roofed, not walled. Okay. And you see a lady there. She's actually the one that's uh, pounding the metal forming a different type of blade that you've never seen. It has a few different curves in it. Not oh, just nice. a way straight blade. Blacksmith lady, totally dwarf hot. Uh, human. That's okay. I still think it's hot. Okay. <laughs> so, so, what are you doing? Hi, Lass. Moment of your time, if you would. She takes a second... She stops what she's doing momentarily. What can I help you with? I have some javelins and oxes I'd like to sell, if you're at all interested. Talk to my brother Garn, he's inside. I she thank goes you much. right back to working on the metal. Okay. I you go walk, inside. Yeah, you walk inside the black iron blades, which is very inviting. There's a little bell that dings as you open the door. Dingling. And Garn's kind of just Almost falling asleep at the counter, propping himself up on his elbows. And when you walk in, he's like, 
Oh. You're, you're new here. I I have some oxes and some javelins I have trying to sell, if you're at all interested. I might be interested. Have you come through here before? I've not seen your face at all. Nay, this is my first time through. I'm here for Algrim Brighthelm. I have uh, some news from his kin, Morak. And I've heard that this is where he keeps himself, so here we are. But on the way here, we had a little bit of a scuffle with some orcs and confiscated their weapons posthumously. They won't need them anymore. I see uh, orcish blades. Well, I, put them out here. I can't promise you anything. I understand. They're not the best, but, uh, you know, <laughs> mayhap they're worth at least something for scrap, or I don't know. Here you go. I just dumped this shit out on the desk. Bag of holding. <laughs> I'm like, barf axes. Then I'm like, barf javelins. I make sure I aim the sharp pointy bits away as they come flying out. Yeah, you barf it onto the countertop without realizing it just spills over the countertop and there's great axes that are now falling forward and backward off the counter. There's not enough room for it all. You've got okay. 21 javelins and 12 great axes. I don't even know how much those are worth normally, so let me pull that open real quick and find out. Sure. The equipment. The great axes are worth... 30 each, so half will be 15 times 12, but he's going to give you 10 times 12. He looks over sure. all the different metal. He, You can see him running his finger across a lot of the um, chips and breaks and scuffs and blood marks. These have not been cleaned up or tended to at all, oiled or nothing. I mean, I'll take whatever you think is fair. <laughs> Sorry, I was reading chat. <laughs> What's going on in chat? Oh, he said his girlfriend listened for two seconds and asked if everyone's Scottish. <laughs> I take that as a slight compliment for our terrible, terrible accents. <laughs> yeah. Horrible, horrible accents. I'm so sorry that you have to listen to me. <laughs> Fuck's sake, man. And he's like, well, I'll give you an extra two gold for the jab. They're just, they're not worth much. I'll take them off your hands. So I could probably repurpose them for something. At least the wood. Use it for firewood, even. Aye, sounds good. So, how much total? In total, you'll get 122 gold. Aye, thank you much. Yeah, if you have anything else, uh, come on by. If you need anything, if you need any armors. Yours is looking a little beat up. Shield's I kind of forward old. to the things that I would like to buy from you. You have fine wares, beautiful workmanship, but I'm cash poor right now. Got it. Well, you have a great I day. I, do you know if there's any work in town to be had for someone who needs to make a little coin? Uh, you could talk to the Sheriff Markham. He might know some more than I do. I don't have any work myself. If you're looking Sheriff. for the kind of work that I expect you're looking for, he eyes you up and down, looks at all your different armors. I, Sheriff Markham? Sheriff Markham. Thanks once more. I'm in your debt. Uh, what's the name of the bar we're going to be at? Kelvin's Cairn? Kelvin's Cairn? Kelvin's Comfort. Kelvin's Comfort. If you happen by Kelvin's Comfort tonight, I'll buy you a drink for your trouble. Maybe I'll just have to stop by then. Well then, mayhap I'll see you. Have a good day. Yeah, you have a great day as well. You look like you brighten his day up a little as you leave. Cool. Theodore so and Thomas. Over. Yep. Yeah, we're heading to the bar. We're done. That was pretty quick. Good job. Mm-hmm. Theodore and Thomas, what are you doing? Going straight to the bar? Um, I figure I'm just going to kind of walk to the market and see what's exciting. It draws my eye. Yeah, it's a kind of a great little market on the furthest north side part of the world. You wouldn't expect it to be as busy as it is, but there's actually a lot of uh, traffic coming through and from. It looks like there's quite a few different traders that have set up shop, all different types of wares, furs mostly, spices, things that are of the north that you've kind of learned. This is uh, a lot of their commodities that people trade here. 
There's not a lot of exotic goods that come from different parts of the world this far north. And most of the people that are trading, they have that rugged uh, Northman look to them. They don't look like they come from the furthest southern part of the world. Are they mostly dwarven, human? As far as you can tell, this settlement's quite heavily dwarven. And then so the I rest of it would be it. a mix of uh, humans, elves, halflings. You see almost every race and every kind here. You even see some um, unfamiliar races, at least maybe to you. I'm not sure if you've seen the tiefling type, if you've heard about them. I don't think I've ever seen But you see a those. couple of those in your uh, travels. There's actually uh, a pair of them at one of the market stalls. Looks like they're selling some very finely crafted <laughs> daggers. Is there anyone even close to six foot nine? Yeah. Is that how tall you are? Yeah. I'm an absolute giant. You're like the mountain dude. You're fucking (laughs) huge. Yeah. He looks abnormal even next to like humans and such. And so. I'm like knee high on you. Yeah. You guys all are like somewhere around my waist. (laughs) Right. So you do see one person that's close to your height. He still doesn't quite reach that six foot nine. He's a very tall, lanky, somewhat pale, bald man. Uh, Looks almost human, but has all these weird markings around his face. On his face, um, looks like it might be tattoos, but they're colored. And he's carrying a bundle of firewood over his shoulder from one building, from one market to a building. Hmm. Hmm. But no, besides that, most people are smaller than you here. Not just smaller, but like dwarven size smaller. A lot of Carmen's in the area. Theodore, do you see anything that we should be investigating? Any, any shops you would like to try out? Well, uh... I do not have a pan flute, though I am proficient in. Or I'm, I'm good with. We the should pan go flute. instrument shopping. Let's go to the guitar center. <laughs> uh, that would be the market. You can just look around this market, and you'd see um, people that are selling kind of general goods, things of all varieties, and you see someone that looks like he's selling different kinds of wood carvings and possibly instruments. Uh-huh. Most of the instruments are actually um, drums, where they have lined the top with skins and made them into cool types of bongos. Ah, this is the place. Hey, you, do you sell yak's horn for horn? He turns around, you see this big, gruff-looking, tusked half-orc. What are you looking for? Are you I'm seeking yak's horn to make for trumpeting? I... Might have something. He <laughs> reaches under the counter and pulls out a bag of all... You hear the clatter and sounds of bones clacking against uh, metals. And he starts fishing through it. He brings out kind of a, a small tusk guy, by comparison of like an elephant's tusk. It's actually almost the size of an orc's tusk. Hmm. This is like baby, baby piccolo flute. Let's... Let us try. He hands it over. I haven't carved it or anything. You'd have to do that yourself. Oh. Oh. <laughs> well, so it makes no music. No. Very interesting. It makes no music. So how much are you selling this broken horn for? It is bad instrument. Two silver. It should cost maybe one and a half silver for being broken still. Roll your persuasion. Nice. Mm. <laughs> Do you actually have persuasion? Yeah, I'm proficient. <laughs> That's so great. <laughs> Fine, I'll give it up for one and a half. It's been uh, taking up too much room anyways. You're very reasonable when it comes to your broken items. You should also talk to my friend here. He is looking for other kind of flutes. I don't have As... anything of that type. You might try uh, Doria's over there. He did not much, even tell you what kind he likes. I don't have any kind. 
He points to the market stall where they have the, uh, it's actually right next to his where some of the bongos and different kinds of drums are hanging up. Oh, you're not connected to the bongo place. All right. Well, no. thank you for your considerations. I'm going to go to the next stall. You take five <laughs> steps to the left to the next stall. <laughs> which is hey, Maria. Doria. Doria. I hear you are flute expert. I have different types of weapons and uh, instruments. What are you looking for? A flute. I, I, I don't I, have any flutes in particular. Not at this moment. I believe he said... I can uh, make something for you a specific. Pan flute. What is a pan flute? You don't uh, know what... It's one of the ones with like... It's got like eight or so tubes and you blow across each each one and it's a slightly different ring and she kind of looks a little confused at you. I've, I've never heard of that um i can see how that might work um different kinds of reeds or yes each yeah. a different length of reed i believe hmm. i don't think i can make one of those right now I just don't have the materials for it. But I I have all of these, and she points to all the other different types of instruments she has, which some are actually uh, metalwork. A couple trumpets. <gasps> I don't know. How many trumpets do you have? <laughs> A couple. <laughs> she has two. Let me see these trumpets. She... I am great trumpet player from back in that day. Pulls out both trumpets. Uh, they're actually hanging up on a hook above her, so she takes them down off the hook and hands you the horn. Now you got to press these different vowels and different combinations. I never really mastered this skill. I've just uh, picked these up in my travels. Oh. So, but there is only three buttons. In different combinations. So if you press oh. those two down at the same time, it makes this kind of noise. So every combination, so there are eight variations. Ah! Very wonderful. If you did the math that quick, then I, I commend you. What? There's only three buttons. It makes eight variations. Well, there's this hole over <laughs> here, too, that you have to cover, or not. She shows you a hole where you can put your thumb. Oh. Very interesting. Is it too small for his thumb? Yeah. It is <laughs> kind of crowded on my hand. <laughs> it's actually really hard for you to use, because if you press down one valve, sometimes you press down two. Yeah, it's definitely a little um, cumbersome. Mm. Perhaps we pass on this until we find one that's more suited for right. you. We should just go to, um, to Tanner. He may have extra bone we could each get the uh, you know different lengths and make pan flute for you i don't believe it normally works with bone i i believe that's more reeds and such i just don't believe that they have the materials in this tundra area what you can definitely make resonance out of bone one time i had uh, this fellow whose leg was ripped off by a tiger and we used his bones to make all sorts of useful things. We actually make crutches out of his own leg. It was very funny. It sounds somewhat horrifying. <laughs> I mean... So you don't want to buy the trumpet? I'll, I'll take it back and hang it back up for now. I can reach it for you if you like. Oh, I got it. Thank you. And she kind of takes it from you. Hoping that Thank you release you it. Hmm. I'm afraid I need something custom to bigger hands. Well, you have the horn. That's larger. Perhaps you could uh, find a way to hollow it out. Hmm. Yes. I could just dig it out. Horn is basically bone, though. See what I'm saying? It is the same thing. Well, these these drums might work for you. You can so hold up a little um, drum. mallet with different sized ends. Well, you use more than one at the same time. And she bangs through with the little tiny uh, rubber mallet or whatever it'd be made out of. 
and it makes different variation of uh, thumps. <laughs> Sounds like fighting. <laughs> I guess it does a little. Make variation on thumps. But I could probably part mm. with these for, for pretty cheap. Um, I made these about a week ago myself. I do not know how to play drum. Well, you take this, and she puts the mallet in your hand. Your gargantuan hand to hers. Her little tiny hand is like as big as three of your fingers. How did and you come you to own this place? <laughs> How do you come to own this musical stall? Most of the stuff I make, and I travel between the ten towns, and... You are traveler, adventurer style? No, no. no. I bet you make great warrior. Thank you. She kind of smiles. Would you make great warrior children? Mm, there it is. I'm sorry, no. I. What are you even? <laughs> I am Thomas. But you're not a human, and you're definitely not dwarven. Are you part giant? No. no I, uh, Triton is the name of most of us. At least what I've been told. I'm guessing there may be some Goliath in, in background. I would just be careful in these parts. Most people frown upon giants, and you you have a little bit of the make of having giant blood. He's mostly amphibious, I believe. He can speak underwater. Her he... eyebrows raise, and she doesn't respond to it. <laughs> that was strange bit of information you hand out so freely. <laughs> I mean, it was... Uh, strange that you did it. So you don't want to buy the trumpet or the drums? Well, if it gets me your favor, I may buy both. Would you like you to what? come to the... Would you come to the ale house tonight after, wor after working? I won't be able to. I'm sorry. It, it, money is no expense we we will be paying for your drinks well i am an expensive lady mm, man i do not understand but, but if you have if you had the, uh i'll tell you what, for my free drinks the drum and the trumpet maybe mm, she's doing some quick math in her head and five gold Okay, easy. Easy peasy. I have to and close I down the over. stall later tonight, though, so it won't be till about 7. 7 what? 7 o'clock. Oh, okay. Uh, you, you have strange clocks here. Fair enough. Let's see. Uh, oh, I only have lots of silver. So 10, so minus 50 of the... You have 50, 50 silver. silver. Yeah. I had well I had 64 silver and 185 copper. Wow. So I had eight gold <laughs> and now I have three gold. <laughs> I can carry it all in small change, so it's actually more useful. She files so all the money one, into a little wooden box that she sets under the countertop. For drum for Well drums. There's a set of three of them that are connected together. Oh, Three drums, and trumpet, and you come to Ale House. And which one is this again? Um, what was called? Clyde's, Clever's, has fire whiskey, fire brand. Uh, I think I know which one that is. You will see me there. I am rather standing out. Y yes. We'll see if you cheer. Please do. All right, Doria. She's not, she's not coming. <laughs> we we will come find you tonight, <laughs> somewhere. Oh Very God, well. that sounds so. <laughs> <laughs> well then, is there any more shopping you wish to do, or should we head to the mm, ale house now? What the I go? Would you like to learn to play drums? I mean, I could certainly give it a shot, but the thing that I'm good with is the pan flute. 
Yes, well, I am only good with horn, but now I have flute, um, trumpet, um, yeah, orc tusk that is not even carved, and drums. Well, I perhaps could... I should take the trumpet since you seem to be the wrong size for it. Yes, I would appreciate if you started making more trumpet noise. Hey, I wonder if we should get something for um, maybe the others. What do you think? Well, I bet I bet Arthur would like to have uh, instruments. Well, maybe, technically, you have three instruments now once you carve uh, out that horn, right? Maybe he will play drum. He will be drummer. We can yes. be rock and roll band. <laughs> he can be traveling song and dance troupe. Hmm. Okay, so gets, while you guys are tiny violin for, for Carmen. other various <laughs> instruments, we'll switch back to Carmen and Arthur. Give me a perception check. Uh oh. That's not good. Oh, wait, I'm proficient. <laughs> I forgot. <laughs> Yeah, this is the thing you do. Yeah, I'm good at this. Hey! Well, thanks, Matt. I'll use my inspiration I got today. <laughs> <laughs> All right, you didn't botch. Good job, Matt. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> That's three botches saved by inspiration. Today's a good day for you guys. Yeah, no kidding. You can tell that um, you're being followed. Uh, Mr. Carmen, uh, I, there's, there's some, some woman that's trail. been eyeing you and um, trying to keep a natural distance behind you, but definitely following you from the smith. Mm. Since Should you're just, about halfway to the market now. Should we just confront her right now? I, that sounds like a good idea. Okay. And Let's see I, what she's about. Wait, for, listen, follow my lead. We'll nip into an alley, and then when she goes to follow, we'll ask her what she's on about. Oh, uh, um, yeah, sure. Okay. So we're going to duck into an alley, and then wait. Okay, and you duck when... into an alley, and you give it about 15 breaths before she comes walking that way, and... She doesn't look like she's slinking as she's walking. She actually naturally looks over as if she's just walking by and sees you guys there. Unless you're hiding. Uh, I can't I hide, so... I don't no. think we're hiding. I'll yeah, just I'll I, wave, I I'll wave her just, over. Yeah, you're just am, waiting yeah. for her. I am yeah, standing just... behind Carmen going, please be a good situation. Please be a good situation. So as she starts to walk by, I'll walk out towards her. I'm not going to try to Shanghai her in the alley. <laughs> That's probably good. I just she might her... not even come join you in the alley. <laughs> yeah. I just want to wait for her to get closer, basically. So she looks over at you, and she has uh, light blonde curls. She smiles as she's been obviously made and mm -hmm. nods her head up and down. Yeah, I nod to her, and I'll walk over. She's actually wearing somewhat of fancy clothes, um, fur-lined blue overcoat with uh, warm winter pants. But she has some weird-looking boots on where they have spikes in them. Oh, strange. Like cleats? Kind of like cleats. The... Okay. All right. I make sure that my money pouch is where I can keep my hand on it. I'm alert <laughs> for other pickpockets in the crowd. Like maybe she's a decoy or something. Relax, but, uh, friend. I'm not here to rob you. Oh, yeah, that's good. Why are you here? She looks over at Arthur. I saw your pin that you wear right there, and she points to on your chest where your uh, cape's pinned to your overcoat. I know what you are. Oh, uh... Ooh, Art. Yeah, he's a young and experienced lad that throws fire. So what? Where do you come from? 
I, uh, I can't remember at the moment. Art, what the fuck, lad? You haven't even had anything to drink yet. <clears throat> Get your wits together. Um, I really can't remember where I am from. Room. <laughs> <laughs> He's blushing a little as he can't yeah, remember. My... <laughs> Sorry, lass. You're He's not from little... the north, are you? No, we're no. We're... From he's uh, art for fuck's sake. He's from Waterdeep. <laughs> <laughs> he's stumbling over his words. Uh, she has a little bit of a beauty. It looks like he's kind of flabbergasted by that. Possibly a uh, human woman. Oh, wow. oh yes, yes, uh, uh, Waterdeep. I'm so sorry. He gets a little mite flustered around beautiful uh, ladies such as yourself. I apologize. She gives a <laughs> chuckle and. Um, as she's kind of moving, you see that she has a crossbow strapped to her back. Uh, it wasn't apparent right away, but it's a different kind of crossbow that you haven't ever seen this type of make. And she has a coiled rope and a grapple at the end of the rope, uh, kind of looped around her belt. Oh, I know what that means. So, last you're about some of the midnight work, huh? What? A thief. <laughs> Do you think before you even open your mouth? No, I I'm never. Not a thief. Well, you have tools of the trade. Yeah, tools of my trade. What's your trade? I am a cleric of Moradin, and I brew a mean owl too. Well, I've been thinking about hunting giants. That's what this is for. Oh, client, you climb them. Well, you grapple them and climb them, and yes, but that's not why I'm here. Your friend, she goes back to addressing you, Arthur. You're a harper, are you not? I I, I don't know what you're talking about right now. Uh, come, Carmen, let's head back to this uh, tavern. Listen, hey, we're in on. the north, and you don't have to play coy here. People are what they are. I can assure you, ma'am, I, I have no clue what you're talking about. And uh, excuse my nervousness, I am not used to a big city like this. Well, I'll come Art. find you at Kelvin's Comfort a little bit later, then, when you have something more to say to me. I have uh, nothing to say, ma'am. Don't worry, lass. We'll get some drinks and then he'll open right up. Uh, come on, Carmen. Let, let us go. I'll see you at Kelvin's Corner. Kelvin's Comfort. Uh, or no, Kelvin's no. Comfort, yeah. I will even buy you a drink. How's that? Oh, that we will fair. not buy you a drink. So. To make up for my misunderstanding, I will buy her a drink. You fuck off, Art. Just because you're scared doesn't mean everybody is. She uh, just continues moving on. I'll see you there. All right, bye-bye. And she the walks uh, you, down the alleyway opposite to you. Listen, let me talk to you about how this works. When a beautiful lass wants to talk to you, you talk to her. You don't not talk to her. That You're fucking up, lad. What the fuck is your problem? Um, Jeez. Morden. God, yeah, help us. Excuse me, Mr. Carmen. I, I do not know what came over me. I know what came over you. You're young and weak in the knees. Listen, we'll get you a couple of drinks in you. It'll be fine. Mm -hmm. And what was she talking about? Harper to this and shit like that. What's a Harper? Um, I, um... Nah, 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 nah. Adventuring friends don't lie to each other. You give it to me straight, lad. Mr. I have your back. Mr. But Carmen, you've got to tell me the truth. There, there are things that um, I cannot speak about. Uh, and this happens to be one of them. That is not how you treat your friends. I have um, it, it, it taken an oath. You've taken an oath? I saved your life. Hmm. Did I not? Mr. Carmen, but uh, I suppose. Listen, you cannot tell anybody about this. This stays between you and me. All right. Fair enough. So, um, yes, say that the, the pin right here uh, is the, the Harper signet. We are, um, I was uh, recruited uh, just before. Uh, 
my other friend who I can't remember his name right now. Jack. Jack. Jesus. Jack. <laughs> yes. yes <laughs> Jack. <laughs> um, I was recruited by the Harpers. Um, uh, that they're they're a group of spellcasters and 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 spies who um who, who work together. Um, we oppose the abuse of power of magical or otherwise. Um, so, yes, that is my secret. And why is that to be a secret? Well, uh, because we try to covertly work against the uh, abuse of power. And then I'd hide that pin. I'd put it like in your box or something. Yes. Evidently, um, some people know what it means. So I, <laughs> you put two I, two together finally, and you're like, the Harpers know what it means. I wonder if she's a Harper too. I did not see any pin on her. Maybe she is smarter than you, and she hides it. Oh. Perhaps when we, we get to the bar, and she shows up, ask her if she is a Harper too. If she is one of you, then you have something in common. You can make your move, lad. I kind of give him a little elbow in the hip. If not, well. We'll shake her and get rid of her. Uh, thank you, Mr. Carmen, for understanding. And I'm, I'm sorry I was he keeping a secret from you. Hi, lad. Don't worry. Uh, everyone goes uh, astray every now and again. And you look like you don't have much of a head for this adventure business, but I'll school you in right. And whatever happens, I have your back. Thank you very much. Hi. If you started a bar fight, even if you was in the wrong, I'd still swing my fist for you. Mm. That's how tight we are. And, and, and I'll do the same. <laughs> well, I thank you. Uh, I'll burn their fucking face off. There you go. <laughs> Stick with what you're good at. <laughs> burn the bar down. You're good at that. I laugh a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> of course, I'm just joking. I, I understand. But no, I'm not. I really mean it. If you ever have need of me. We're a fast friends now, me and you. I said, our friendship is going to mean a lot in the upcoming events, I believe. No matter what happens, you stay close to me. I'll see you through. All right? No Mr. worries, lad. Mr. Carmen, um, what are your plans after you drop off the ring? Well, I don't have much. Mayhap I'll find work at a bar here. Uh, you know, I make a mean ale, despite what that fuck Tom says. And, uh, you know, I don't know. Find some work in the neighborhood or in the area. So, I don't have... Listen, I was sent up north um, by the Harpers to report report back to them with any unusual findings. Um, I believe the, that there is... Um, Well, there's a lot of uh, a, a giants up here causing disturbances. I. We know this from the friend that told, or the friend of whoever you got your ring from. And I forget his name as well. I, the bartender. I also forget his name. I believe Morak. it has something to do oh, with Oh, yeah, the Morak. I, Morak told us about the giants. Yes, the around. Harpers did not tell me what. Uh, was going up in the north, but I'm assuming it has to do with something with the giants. Well, if you need someone to come along with you, I'd be happy to uh, come along for the ride. I'm I'm hoping Thomas and and Theodore will also join us. And maybe if you remember my name, <laughs> <laughs> I did Theodore this time. Yep. <laughs> yep, this time. <laughs> I, I did. <laughs> the woodsman's for hire for a share. And, uh, I mean, Tom probably could along just for shits and giggles. He seems like he's a ship without a rudder. So, yes, well, let's probably find we can get him to come our way. Let's find out exactly what is happening on, and we'll go from there. All right. Now we need to secure to some, we need some money, though, lad. Yes. Um, I have learned more powerful spells, and I have the ability to bring someone back from the dead, but I need a diamond for 
for the component and it's very expensive oh, also yes. i could use better armor yes yes uh, maybe we speak to the sheriff tomorrow hi let's speak to the sheriff we'll see if he has any work for us well okay. how much time do we have right now uh mayhap we should rejoin our companions first yes let's find Ogram, yes. find Serik, be done with our current mission and then move on to another objective yes and i kind of try to find something else to pin my cape with but i don't really find anything so i'm just leaving it my pin in armors. okay but that is on my mind so you two will make your way back to the market and Kelvin's Comfort is a large two-story tavern slash inn. It's one of the larger establishments in the market square. And you can go on in where you will find, I believe Thomas and Theodore went there at some point, right? I believe so. Uh, was <laughs> it after... What were we doing after the... Looking for more instruments. <laughs> You did not find any tiny violins. I think we, fact, are, we were headed back in that direction. Yeah, it's most of the stuff for... you find out here is kind of crude instruments. There's nothing that's really fancy. No lyres, no harps, um, no stringed instruments at all, really. And you find both of them in Calvin's Comfort, who haven't been here more than two minutes. They're just being served their first drink if they ordered one. I did. Mm -hmm. I did. And food? Yes. Definitely. Definitely. So, you see yeah, them I, up at the bar. The Triton towering above the bar. And his mm -hmm. friend. Tiny, tiny stools. Yeah. <laughs> little tiny stools. And the one stool he's sitting on, it looks like one of the legs is slightly bowed. Not to the point of breaking yet. <laughs> oh, man. His butt doesn't even fit on the stool completely. It's like one Pro cheek in it. Yeah. <laughs> Probably should be taking a sturdier bench. You find a couple long rectangular tables with much sturdier benches. I've heard oh. that this is the place for, be for fire, whiskey, brandy, something of the sorts. That is what I want. Hi, and a, around and a tall rolls. glass. None, none of those. None of those little cups. The proprietor of the bar. He looks over. Fire brand whiskey coming right up. How many? Two, Two three, four, four. Four, yeah, four it is. Us. Um, uh, uh, none for me, sir. No, four hey, it is. Hey, none of that. Four it is, lad. That's your Listen, first one visit of us here. Now, I slap him on the back. Mr. You got a drink. Mr. Carmen, I have never had a drink. I know. I believe we'll friend. have uh, a female joining us as well, as if uh, she decides to take us up on the offer. I invited a blacksmith to come by for a drink, too. He seemed like a, a right nice lad. And another Excellent. female. <laughs> we will have many friends. You guys invited three people to join you. We invited three people to come. We're like, come on by. <laughs> Great. It's a drink. Hi, we invited a, uh, Art has a friend who likes him. She was following us over to the market, and we invited her to come, too. Mm, that is good. Ah, it's on the party. Perhaps we should be getting biggest table, then. In well, case our friends be coming. Sure. Well, well, yeah, we'll get some tables. We'll get two and push them together. You uh, grab two tables, push them together, and... There's enough room there for about eight people to sit comfortably, seven once Thomas sits down. <laughs> nice. He takes up way too much room. Listen, Art, the thing about drinking is until you find your stride, you just go easy, take little sips until you kind of figure out where you're at with it. Uh, all right? It... I'll walk you through it. You'll be all right, lad. Someone comes over with a tray of four... Flame Beard's Fire Brandy. It's the bartender that you were talking to. My grandfather's recipe. Here you go. And he sets the cup down in front of each of you. It goes back two generations. Perfected. I think you'll like it. And he uh, 
takes sure. a little um, flint and tinder, lights up a little tiny torch, and torches each drink on the top. Uh, but before you go, one thing there. Uh, we're looking for Ogram Brighthelm. I have some news from his kin, Morak. Oh. I came a long way to deliver it. Ogric. I, he, he frequents Ogric. every night. You'll see him here well, shortly. When he comes in, can you put him in my direction and tell him the first drink's on me? You got it. What was your name? Carmen. Carmen Burrowfan. <laughs> the slight delay. Uh, <laughs> yep, that names happened. Were, uh... <laughs> yes, names, names. Carmen Burrowfan. I'll send him your way. I thank you much. So you guys start drinking. So far, it's just the four of you. Arthur, are you going to drink? Uh, it's It's been a very long day. <laughs> Eventually, the fire on the top sizzles out. And it leaves a nice crisp, crisp smell in the air. And this I'll, whole uh... bar is actually... Um, very pleasant aromas. Got a little bit of smoky smell. It's a little bit dusty, but not too bad. And the people here are very uh, jovial. People are happy and celebrating the days, the nights. It's only like 4 p.m. Look, that's not bad. Just take a little sips. Take little sips. It'll be all right. Are you, are you sure about this, Mr. Carmen? I, I, do, I... <laughs> I am sure. Just little sips, little sips. Go slow. I suppose it's been a, a long day and we're in the city. Aye. Go slow. Little and, sips, you'll be okay. And I just stick my tongue in it just to get a tongue. Oh, tongue you're tongue. doing it said, wrong. What, what the and fuck I set it back doing? down so hard that it spills all over. My God, <laughs> he looks like a listen, cat. <laughs> listen, no, that's not, that's not how you do it. Watch, watch me do it. Watch, I'll show you. And I kind of lift my beard out of the way so you can see. And then I just take a little sip. I like that. And then uh, <clears throat> it's good. Burns going yes. down, puts the fire but in your That body. was enough for one day. No, no. Yeah, sit here, lad, until you drink. Now see, you, oh, jeez. For <laughs> more than sake. Listen, in a few minutes, a beautiful ass is going to come through that door and want to talk to you. Now, if you're going to have the I got to go to the like, bathroom, excuse me, and I get no, up. No, 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 no. <laughs> <laughs> ah, <fuck. laughs> oh so I rest He seems bit. very even more nervous than normal. I uh, well a beautiful girl tracked him down and was asking all manner of questions he didn't want to answer. So he ran away. Are you sure she was interested in him? <laughs> no, I don't think she was interested in him at all, but I don't think I'm gonna tell him that. He does not have the confidence as the usual Ladies, man. No, he is not. That's true. Hmm. <sighs> I don't well, think he's ever with his whistle. And I don't, I'm not talking about drinking brandy either. <laughs> Fair enough. You hmm. hear the sound of um, someone's armor and arms clinking together as they're slowly striding their way over towards your table. Nice. You look over and there's a somewhat tall human, nothing compared to Thomas, but he's like 6'3", fully armored, fully armed, um, plate armor. His boots clink on the ground, ching, 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 and he strides his way up towards the table. Is this seat taken? Well, who'll be you? Is <laughs> this the beautiful lady? <laughs> Nay, it's not the beautiful lady. We have friends coming, but they're not here yet. You can grab a seat for now. But uh, if the people that we invited start edging you out, you might have to pull up a stool or something. I'm all right with that. All right, well then, go ahead. Sit yourself down. <laughs> he manages to jam himself into the uh, bench and table much better than Thomas did. Thomas's knees are touching the bottom of the table. So he's kind of uh, <laughs> Every way time too I big shift this. my weight. The whole the table everyone's drinks kind of quivers. And now that he's sitting on it, you two actually, um, the space for about four people is taken. That's it. No one else would want to sit here with you two. And the bench might not even support that much weight. My name is Sir Beric Nyleth. 
Sir and I noticed Knight. your ring right there. He points towards the ring you wear, Carmen. Hey, what about it? Order of the Gauntlet. Are you not? I am. You hide your, uh, or you think about your winter ring. You're like, hmm. Yeah, that's what I thought for a minute. I was like, oh. Hmm. You don't look I very more... well prepared to come out to Bryn Shander. You're not wearing many heavy furs or anything. The cold don't bother me. How long have you been a member? Uh, how long have I been a member? Just before your journey, maybe a couple months before. I, not long, just a few months before we started on this leg of our journey. Six months or so, maybe? Yeah, about half a year. Well, this journey so far is a month and a half, two months. Oh, about four months. But yeah, just for a reference. Okay. He'll believe whatever you months. tell him. <laughs> you sure, sounded I'm so fair. sure of yourself. <laughs> That's what I thought was going on. About four months. I'm not from these parts either. I wasn't expecting to come up to Bryn Shander or up this far towards the uh, Icewind Dale region. What brings you this way? I am tracking someone. Although I don't hail all the way down from Waterdeep, um, I'm after someone that's been causing trouble. Who are you after? Well, his name is the Weevil, or that's what they call him. That's what he goes by. The Weevil. Someone that's uh, raided some, a few summer caravans. He's been traveling between, or the caravans have been traveling between the Luskin and the Mirabar. Hmm. There's been well, a few raids time. at the mines of Mirabar. They haven't been stealing mm. too much, mostly food and drink, but a uh, few people went missing. Mm. Taking some captives. We caught wind of this, and they sent me this far north. I don't know if that was punishment now that I think about it. But here I am. What was your punishment? I have no punishment. I'm here under my own free will. <laughs> Right. For real, though. No. Tell me. For real, I'm here to talk to Ulrich Breithelm and to find someone in Sarek. I have news of their kin, and I promised I would come this far and deliver said news to them. You promised someone news, and you traveled this far across the world. Aye, well, news, and there's something I owe Just to Sarek. Just news will do. There's plenty of things to be talking about. That's a pretty sure. honorable deal you made. I don't know many well, people that would do that. You know for now. I made a promise. And when I make a promise, I keep it. He kind of raises his eyebrows and he throws back his uh, flame beard's fire brandy. <laughs> I'll, throw, I'll throw mine back too. Not to be outdone. Oh, yeah. Uh, Arthur, what are you doing? Are you coming back? Um, <clears throat> no. <laughs> he is nervously. <laughs> I went diarrhea to the bathroom and I got out. And what are you guys at the bar or a table? We have a couple tables pushed together. Uh, yeah, I'll just um, I'll well, stay. your perception. Uh, just him. Just Arthur. Oh, you I separated yourself from I, the herd, when friend. I came out. I have my hood up. That's not going to help you. Uh, I don't know if you rolled it twice or not. I think you rolled it twice, but we'll take the first one. 15 is enough. You see that same woman. She's at the uh, front door looking around. She's kind of scoping the area out, and she sees you. You make eye contact with her, and she starts striding your way. I march towards her. Oh, you and... march right towards her. Um, I was not expecting I... that. <laughs> As I passed by... I'll look at her and I'll say, follow me. Okay, but she stopped in front of you, so you actively move around her, pass by her, and she takes the hint and will follow you. Where are you going? I'm just outside. Uh, Do I see them there's exiting? There's an alleyway. Um, with your passive perception, you're drinking and talking, so you'd have disadvantage. My passive is uh, 17. 17? Yeah, you see them. Even with disadvantage. They're not trying to hide. 
Um, so I'm going to call out, Hey, Art, your drink's still waiting for you, lad. Come I'll get just, it before it gets cold. As I'm walking out, I just raise my hand and I'll do a little wave. I won't look back. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Would you like me lad. to follow them? That seems I, Maybe if you can keep your eye on the lad. She was the one that was after him. I'm not sure that her intentions are honorable. Hmm. She might can I go out the? Can I follow him out the door and uh, can I try to tail him? Are you trying to hide? Uh, I would say yes. Okay. Go ahead and roll a stealth roll. It's not like you're actually trying to physically hide your body, but you're trying to be unnoticed in your attempts to follow them. Oh snap! Oh, <laughs> damn. And you naturally stand up and you walk towards the window you wait till they get a few paces away where they're not looking back where are you taking her art that'll make a difference of where theodore can even go um if we can is if there's an alleyway by the bar i'll just duck into the alleyway so yeah the uh, bar in front has a large awning and there's actually a couple tables outside that are roofed they're not occupied right now because no one in the right mind would want to drink out here when there's a nice warm fire inside um yeah and you walk, so you walk her to the alleyway, or yeah, okay. to the alleyway. You hang a quick left outside the door. You walk towards the alleyway. Thomas, you see where they're going. You make your way across Not the Thomas, street. Theodore, Theodore, sorry, I keep doing that. But Theodore, you see them. You make your way across the street so you can keep an eye on them, but not look like you're following them directly. Mm -hmm. Do you stop right in the uh, mouth of the alley? I uh, just duck back just a little bit. She like looks up at you. Is this where you take all the ladies? And she gives you a sly smile. Mm. I'm just joking with you. You don't have to be so nervous. Hmm. And what do you know of the Harpers? What do you think? I am a Harper. Hmm. How else would I have known? I suppose you wouldn't have. To most people, that signet on your coat is just an emerald signet nobody would know unless they really were looking but i'm trained to look at these kinds of things to see these things she pulls up her uh, sleeve and you see on the cuff she has the same uh, clasp keeping her cuffs together and does word and does the word secrecy mean nothing to you well you haven't been in the north very long are you so dedicated to the cause that you wouldn't even tell a fellow member? I would have sought you out. I don't even think you'd have known where to find me, or if you even can. Hmm. Are you new to this? Uh, yes. I could tell just um, by that hesitation. Just for a few weeks. Oh, wow. Just a... A new sprout. Well, you don't come from here, obviously. And there's a reason you were sent up here, and I'm just looking to find out why. Well, they didn't tell me. They just told me to report back with any unusual going on. And do you know Though who they is, or are you going to keep that a secret as well? <laughs> The Harpers. <laughs> yes. No one, the Harpers. No one I don't know. I have one specific name. Do you have any contacts? No. So you have to report back to someone you don't even know? No, because my DM never gave me that information. <laughs> 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 you probably do know who. So you can uh, list blah, off blah, some blah, names. Blah, 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 blah. Um, fart on, face Matt. Mickey. What's their name? <laughs> 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 Put it back on you. Oh, dang it, Ryan. <laughs> yes. Yo, do you need a name generator like I have? Yeah, I don't feel like getting one of those. Uh, okay, here we go. Name. I've got one. Go for it. 
Um, Raymond Whistler. Uh, yes, that is an entirely legitimate name, I'm sure. Not a code name at all. <laughs> yes, uh, Raymond's the one that sent me up here. Listen, I don't mean to grill you. I just wanted to talk with you, and we don't actually have to talk in this alleyway. It's quite cold. Can we go inside? I suppose that'll be all right. Buy me a drink? I, I don't drink. I didn't ask. What, are you poor? <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> wow. Wow. Yeah, she actually gives you the... um silent wow as she raises her eyebrows <laughs> and you just don't even get it nope <laughs> so bad at this come on <laughs> follow me uh you two walk back in the bar maybe five minutes and then we can join your friends she points towards That's a smaller quick. table more intimate so we sit down there <laughs> So you sit down. While that's happening, switching back, Thomas. Hey. Doria does walk in. Um, in the feeling. You were half expecting her not to come, or maybe everyone else was. Yeah. I assume that she, she... She looks a little timid, and she's looking around and instantly sees you and walks over and pulls up a seat across from you. Hello, Doria. Welcome. Uh, Are you saying hi to um, newest friend here, Sir Barrack of something or other? But we also Sir have Sir Barrack Nyleth. That one. But Carmen is also here. I... And uh, the F Theodore who you met before is uh, uh, out being who knows what. He, he does weird things in the shadows. Uh. <laughs> it's good to meet you all. I heard there's a good fire brandy. I haven't tried it. Probably. Um, come. I wave my arm over toward the bartender. We need one more liter of your fire brandy. I will go with another round. Let's get everybody good and liquored up. Well, I don't provide them in liters, but here you go. And he uh, sets some cups down, one in front of everyone. And then he Good torches you, all the tops again. Thank you for inviting me out here. I haven't been out in a while. Mm. Yes, it is important to have uh, vibrant social structures. Otherwise, you get the board and only work at shop. All work and no play makes Thoria a dull girl. She downs her firebrand. <laughs> yeah, I hope you don't mind. I invited someone else. No, that is <laughs> exciting. Yeah, it's her boyfriend. Do we have room for more people? I will we'll just push another table over. <laughs> yes, we need more tables. You guys grab the next table over, which is a round table. It doesn't fit very well to the square, but it's more seats and more room. <laughs> Perfect. Sir Barrett gets his food delivered to the table. He's got some nice, uh, some kind of bird and veggies on the side. Mm. Yeah. Excellent. So, Mr. Barrick, what brings you to our table? It seems like you have ideas about who we are and why. I did not have any ideas of the sort, he says while he's chewing on some food. You well, always just pick medicine. random table to sit with? Nay, so that was part of the order. And he was wondering what my punishment was. Because evidently, you only come up here if you're getting punished or if you're promised someone something, I guess. I don't know. Hmm. Well, who, who did you piss off, sir? Barrett? Well, I just figured you wouldn't be in your right mind to have to come this far north. Especially What's if from? you're from the south. I didn't mind the cold. My feet really. haven't been warm in about two months. What's wrong with the North? What are you talking about? You you need more iron in your blood. Uh, eat more red meat. It will help your circulation. I don't think that's the case. How old are you, lad? About 
45. Yeah, it's not bad. Respectable and much all that. But you'll get used to the cold if you hang out here long enough. That's you need to acclimate. Oh, I hope to the gods I'm not out here long enough. What I was honestly again? looking for more information if you happen to have any of this Warble Weevil. Well, I don't know anything about this Weevil guy. Sorry. And that's all right. Then I just didn't a... mind having a drink and some friends, some company. Is, is sure. there other name for him? You're welcome to drink. More information. Well, that's what he goes by, and that's what we know him as. You know the Weevil is, is he? A, is he and... human, or is He's he? A dwarf. You know, <laughs> always a dwarf. <laughs> That's funny. A dwarven oh. thief. Ah, uh, strange, strange times, I guess. Well, it's when you not mine out of the mountain, boys. you mine out of the care of them. I wonder why he's doing his thieving. Yes, perhaps we go this way, Dave. No, I don't think so. But I'm just, it seems strange to me that he would rob a mine and only take food and maybe a few people. Have there been any ransom notes? No. There have not been any ransom notes. Well, then right how do you now, know I've didn't... heard that he's just been hiding out in the ten towns, and I've been going between each different town here and there, and if I can learn any information, I would, but I haven't learned anything so far. It's been a long two months, honestly. I'm ready to just pack it in and go home. Well, I mean, uh, you know, aren't you, like, honor-bound and all that to fulfill your duty? Well, of course, but if there's nothing to be done, what am I supposed to do? I'll stay at it, lad. How long have you been here? I just said two months. It's a two long time. Is... No, two months is not very long. Two months in hell is long. I this place is not hell. He downs his fire whiskey. I'm sure hell is worse than a year. Avernus is a bad place. This is another bad. It's just cold. Right. One more, he says to the bartender. Aye, another round. <laughs> you guys are starting to rack up the costs. Tab is running. I mean, how bad is it? Uh, it's only like four gold now. Oh, well, it's not too bad. We can deal with, with food and drink. Sure. Hmm. Uh, you see another woman days. enter and come sit next to Doria. She is actually a familiar face, Thomas. You didn't interact with her, but she's another one of the uh, market girls. Ah. Ah, hello. I am Thomas, and this is Carmen and Beric. Hello, lass. It's good to meet you, Thomas, she says, and she holds out her hand face down for you to take it. I fist bump. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> she chuckles. So I heard that you might be buying a lady a drink? Oh, only ladies who share names. Fuck. <laughs> <laughs> Damn, you got me finally. <laughs> you want the name generator? <laughs> no, my name is Madeline. Madeline. Madeline, yes. Are you... Is the fire you whiskey the fire good here, Daria? And Daria nods up and down. She's pretty quiet. Oh, I'd love a fire whiskey, she says. Madeline. Very well. Let's make it the double for you so you can catch up to the rest of us. She takes off the bandana around her hair and stuffs it in her pocket and her hair falls loosely across her shoulders and kind of shakes her head up. Oh, two would be great. Thank you. Pretty nice. Are these both human? Yeah, both human. human. Very well. Ah, so you are also from the marketplace again. Yeah, we've been traveling together for a while now. Oh, really? Very fantastic. I actually met hey. Daria here in Bryn Shander about a year ago. And she smiles, and Daria slightly smiles. Mm, fancy. I wonder if any of you... Do you ever come across a larger horn? Musical instrument. My hands oh. are much too large for these small little ones. <laughs> and Morin's very one sharp chuckles. about this fucking horn. I'm I'm afraid we've never had that trouble. That's kind of funny. And she eyes you up and down. Uh, you've never had trouble of finding large horn. <laughs> never had the problem presented to us. I hate to um, well, shut the fuck up and get get some more drinks for everybody. Well, they're coming. We are talking while we are drinking. Drinks set down. Tink 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 tink. 
Right. She has okay. two in front of her. And she downs the first like a champ. Hey! <sighs> See? <sighs> her eyes kind of water. Enthusiastic. A little tear goes up. All right, one more. One more, okay. And she downs the second one just as quickly. Hmm. The so kind of looks traveling. away and blushes a little. Oh. What is wrong, Doria? <laughs> nothing, nothing. You're... Where are you traveling? What? We have been traveling up from the south, and this is as far as we go. We are not sure what comes next, but we know that the town of Bryn Chandra is famous for its fire whiskey, for its warm hospitality, and what I was hoping was for uh, yak's horn and conch shells, but apparently there's those are both in short supply here. Well, I don't think people are particularly interested in those kinds of items, at least normally. And I don't think you'll find any conch shells out in this area. You know, the unless conch they're shells imported. That, yes, those were unlike. But I imagined that, I mean, you skin the yak, you have the horn left over. Yes. I'm surprised that they are in short supply. Hmm. Well, what are you going to do about it? I am going to kill Yak and perhaps make my own. That's an idea. Do you know anyone who has Yak for sale? Well, I'm sure that you could find some. Not, I don't, not in the ten towns that I know of. Um, no. Wait. You are expert. But you believe there is no Yak in the entire ten town? No. They're not uh, used for any um, travel. What do you have for beast of burden here? Well, we have the regular pack horse, mules. But they are too cold. They you need to the, be warmed. You put a blanket over them. But there is natural blanket on long hair beast. Well, I don't think you can... You know, I don't really know. It's an confused. interesting conversation. You should probably uh, talk to someone that knows more about it. Okay, so I pivot over to Doria. <laughs> Have you ever seen long hair? She spits yak? up a general. <laughs> I could no, really no. do this forever. So if you're trying to get conversation to go somewhere, no, uh... I really don't care. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Wonder where little Arthur is, and you look uh, back, and he's we've... over there talking to. Hey, he's talking about his own last right now. What about Theodore? He is also missing. Here he comes wandering back in now. Yeah, I can probably keep an eye on him. The table, hmm. so I'll... Yeah, I think that's over. all right. Skipping back over to Arthur. Where do we leave off, Arthur? Um, We're sitting down. <laughs> I don't remember exactly, so... I think she just worded, wow, and then walked. Well, they were talking a little at the table. Oh, okay. Well, she looks at you, Arthur. My name is Beldora. Sorry I didn't introduce myself earlier. You are Arthur? Uh, yes. And you come from Waterdeep. I've, I've never been that far south. It's, it's good to meet you. I have contacts outside of Bryn Shander. And if you need to get any information back, that's something I can help you with. She holds out a little stone. And she sets it on the table and it spins a little. Slowly spins. Kind of like a top, but way too slow. And then she puts her finger on the top and it comes to rest. If you need to send a message, I can do one message every day. <clears throat> My main contact, he's in Hundlestone, but he has many contacts. So it's possible that he knows who you're looking for. This person's name I didn't write down. Something whispers. Raymond Whispers. Whistler. Right, yeah, Raymond Whistler. Writing it down right now. So what do you say? Do you know anything? <clears throat> um, 
no, not quite yet. I, I just know that there's rumors of giants up here causing disturbances. Do you know anything about that? Well, you're not the first to hear about that. And she uh, taps the crossbow that she set at the side of the table. And yes. they've always caused disturbances. But this is a little more common than it was in the past. Yes. I think it has something to do with the ordering. With the ordering. What's the ordering? <clears throat> she looks very interested. Uh, yes. Uh, let me um, let me tell you uh, what has happened in the last week or two. We've we met a giant. And, uh, we you met a giant? Us. Yes, yes. Um, he brought us up north. Um, she kind of smiles. Uh, you're you're not pulling my leg, are you? No, I am not. He was a he was a cloud giant. The bartender sets a drink in front of her, a fire whiskey. Yes, um, he was very kind. Uh, we learned a lot from him. Um, so there's there's something to do with the ordining, and the ordining is what kind of controls the giants and keeps them in check, right? And um. There's, there's been a disturbance in that ordinary. I'm not exactly sure how it works, but I think it does have to do with the king of the giants. The what king of the giants? She raises her eyebrows. Let's see if I can... If you weren't such a, a nervous man, I might be half tempted to not believe you, but... <laughs> Wow. Uh, yes, uh, King Mesaton, I believe, is... Hecaton. Hecaton. <laughs> is, the, is the king. Um, I believe he's missing now. So because he's missing, the other giants are rebelling? Yeah. Um, see, that's where I... I'm not too sure. See, yeah, I, I, I'm not really sure what the ordering exactly is. It was, uh, I do know that it was created by uh, Adnan. And then, then passed down to King Hecaton. I see. Well, this is above my knowledge level. It's possible... That my contact in Hundlestone might know a little bit more. He gets more messages coming to and from. And part of that job is retaining that information, even if it's not directly for him. But yes, I can trust him. And, um, and oh, oh, where is Hundlestone? That's the town you guys bypassed. Whoops. Oh, oh oops. <laughs> and I suppose Color me I surprised have to travel <laughs> south to Hundlestone to talk to uh, what's his name? His name is Thwip. Thwip is an interesting name. Is is he human? He's a gnome. Ooh, you racist scum. And I'm sure it's a very common name for their kind. Just like they would think Arthur might be a little odd. Uh, I did not mean to insult his name. I just... <laughs> I'm just giving you a hard time, Arthur. You need to relax. It's it's very hard to relax, except especially with everything going on in the she world. She waves right the now. bartender over. There you go. I'd like to buy him a drink, too. Uh, no, thank you. Listen, it's on me. The the giants. I believe they took a stone, the night stone. Have you ever heard the night stone? No. 
Would you uh, mind if I joined you? I needed to see Thwip anyways. Uh, of course. The bartender said to drink down in front of you. Switching back over. Thomas, Carmen, and Theodore. Um, <clears throat> the two ladies have started talking amongst themselves quite a bit. They'll join in conversation with you guys as well. Lingering magic. What is What's lingering magic? That didn't work. That did not work. Whatever I, you're trying. Why didn't do. it link? That's interesting. It did the same thing mine normally does. Hmm. We'll do <laughs> like this. Probably because it's from a source that can't be populated or something. Bah. Copy paste. There you go. So it's basically I can cast detect magic uh, for free. You faintly glow a color. <laughs> no, I see faintly glowing color. Is that part uh, of your? You faintly, it says, "Look at you, faintly glow a color." Yeah, corresponding to the school of magic you detect, you choose the colors. Oh, that's awesome! Yeah, so if I like a dousing rod. if I detect, yeah, um, you know, necromancy, I glow like that dark purpley black. Yeah, black lights. Nice. That's awesome. Okay, so you detect this right now. Yep, I'm gonna be doing it. Without using a spell slot or components, does that mean you don't need to do verbal anyways? That's Great. Kinda I think cool. he just, just does it. I just, just kind of it. do it. It's it's a leftover. Um, it's like a a part of my the wild soul. Like there's just magic inherent going on. You hear? <laughs> Look at that, Daria. Your friends reacting very strongly to the firebrand, and they start giggling. As your skin starts, uh, or the aura around your skin, it's just very slightly offset on the outside, uh, not a, emanating very far from you, and it's glowing, and the colors keep changing because you detect multitudes of magic. Oh, really? You're like Rainbow Bright's big blue friend. It's constantly changing colors, and you're detecting... um necromancy transmutation enchantment divination all of that's coming from carmen wow but it's all coming from his ring whoa okay so that one's going bananas is anybody else giving anything off um, Barrick, either of the ladies sir Barrick, no the ladies no Arthur is not currently casting any spells. It's not nearby. But you do... Well, give me a perception check, because this is actually really hard to see. Yeah, you don't. I lied. You better so slow everything's down. distracting. And uh, so I kind of just look down at your hand. And I'm like, May boy, that's... You... That's, uh... Can't say as I'd ever take time to notice before. I for, I'm uh, trying not to use your accent. What yeah, is right. that? That's <laughs> that, what that, that accent is so bizarre. <laughs> um, your ring, it's it's bigger and badder than I did never notice before. Hey, it's a ring. Yeah, it's a uh, it's useful for stuff, mm -hmm. you know. Hmm. But, uh, something's going on with you, son. Yep, you might need to stop drinking for a minute. I don't know what's happening, but it's uh, <laughs> no, and I can just let it drop and uh, let the fade go away. Like, merely ready for one more. Oh, all right, then. Okay, uh, so one, two, three, four, five, five more of these lovely fire whiskeys. Hey, another one for, one for you. Um, or, and then Madeline said, um, and one for Thomas me. There? Is, yeah, if, no, that, if, uh, oh, if Theodore is there, then I would say six, six. more. Thank you. you what back. a gentleman. She Excellent. chuckles. There he is like, I'm, I'm done for the night. Thank you. Fair enough. Well, we have an extra in case anyone's feeling ambitious. I raise my hand. I, and she kind of gives a, a glare towards Madeline, like, don't do it, because <laughs> Madeline's eyes perk up. No, I'm like, I'll take that, thank you. Tom, do you have a moment? 
I have. We we have no literally no plans rest of existence. That's yes, not true. I, I, I have plans. I, well, well yes, come with me to the bar. Must, uh, all right. We'll, we'll be right <laughs> Excuse back my rude dwarven friend. He does not know. All right, you you guys uh, hopefully entertain each other yeah. for a moment. Be right back. So <laughs> I slide the the bench out and I pu have to push the <laughs> table back and I muscle past uh, Sir Barrick. Uh, excuse me, pardon. Uh, okay, uh, still set, eating. Yeah, that's spirit. We should get more snacks as well. Hey, let's get more snacks from the bar. Come on, we'll go together. I uh, mm -hmm. listen, you daft man. What Dory, is it? Dory's too shy, but Maddie wants to shag the fuck out of you. So I don't know what you're shooting for here, but they're about to get pissed off at each other if you don't manage things well. You gotta manage the situation. Uh, great. I just thought I'd clue you in because I don't know if you know what the fuck's going on over there. No, it seems 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 unlikely. Unl but what's uh, unlikely? <laughs> Doria is too shy. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> you're funny. All right. Um. So we need to get. Uh. We need two roasted duck. Uh, we need uh, urchins that are pickled and no, listen, shish Nate, kebab. You, that's not how they do things here. They don't have urchins. We're not by the sea anymore. You big galoot. Listen. Hey, Marky, also, what's what's your special yak. for bar snacks? What do you have? What's your special thing? Uh, he'll list off all the normal shit. Yeah, we'll right. have bring oh. some of that to the table. We'll have some appetizers and stuff. We have one hundred of your donuts. That sounds perfect. <laughs> Pheasants sure. and other things that uh, vegetables that grow on the ground, potato based, sure. like that. and shit. Potato, yeah, okay. potatoes, we'll some of those just dried, dried vodka. potato, dried potato skins <laughs> and other things. <laughs> thank, thank you very much. Lots of meat. Damn. I cannot but talk no, at the yeah, same as... time that you're talking, Thomas, because you're fucking me up. It's, it's very <laughs> difficult. I almost have to not listen and just talk, which is why it is easier I, when that happens. Nothing new. <laughs> <laughs> so you guys right. gather a pretty much a feast for the table, and you turn back around, you see that uh, Madeline has her arm around Daria. Hey. Oh. See, you... You are now. You are the deaf one. <laughs> <laughs> and you realize you totally misread that situation. Whoops, my bad. <laughs> Sorry about that, Tom. I you, fucking. You seem to be un, <laughs> unaccurate in your uh, guesstimations. <laughs> True, which is probably why I'm single. Cheers. Mm -hmm. <laughs> maybe maybe we should get clams or peaches. I think that. Uh, they, they like that sort of thing more. And while you're sure. walking back, you actually see the blacksmith who's sitting at the table with uh, your group. Oh, nice. Yeah, he made it. The one you're you gathering more and more. Oh, no, I invited this lad. He's a good lad. He uh, he bought all of our uh, axes and all of our javelins from us so we could have a party tonight. He's paying for drinks indirectly, so I thought he should come by and have one or two. Ah, sounds fair. Welcome aboard the blacksmith. To the good ship table um, happiness. Hey, have, have a drink on us, son. That was the whole point. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> You're not really That's much not what for he new ones, are you, Mr. Blacksmith? <laughs> That's not what he says. I thought that was the whole point. <laughs> oh. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah, he's already knocked back one drink already. He's working oh, on sweet. a second. And Sweet. he is talking with the ladies and Sir Barrack, and they're talking about just nothing, really. Nothing important. Random <laughs> things mm -hmm. of the north. Although Sir Barrack seems to always bring it back. He's kind of like that one guy that always has something sarcastic to say about his wife. That's the north to him. Oh, dude. Mm. Rough. So, ladies, what town are you off to next? I think we're going to stay in Bryn Shander for a little bit. Um, we decided maybe one more week. Madeline smiles. Very exciting. What to make you stay here? Well, it's a nice place and it has good meal and we can afford it now. Thanks to you. Hmm. 
Yes, happy to be helping. Uh, do you know how to play drums? I could use lessons. Oh, fuck. The lessons, <laughs> the drums that you sold me today. So they will well, talk I... to you about drums for a while. All right. We're gonna and... we're gonna wrap that up a little bit. Oh, okay. So that's that's where you draw the line. <laughs> <laughs> the line. <laughs> there is a line. I'm, I'm waiting for Ogric to show up. Yeah, Ogric will be here eventually. Um, I am going to try to seduce two lesbians into letting me be their bodyguard. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. Um, another 20 minutes passes by and you see a dwarf walk in with a fiery red beard and he comes over and sits at your table. It's the same guard that you talked to on your way in. Oh, <laughs> are you, we are, are you going Ogre? to need more tables. <laughs> are you Ogric? Hi, I'm Ogric. It's good to meet you again. <laughs> so you know good my cousin now. Ah, Morak, I... Uh, sad How news, well do you know said, him? I know his in burn down, and he lives in uh, oh, Nightstone. Uh, I saved him from some goblins and uh, an ogre that wanted to eat him. It was that very sounds exciting. Very, uh, it sounds like you know him pretty well. I, well enough, I did pull his bacon out of the fat fryer. He told me that if I needed any hospitality, I could call on you here when I got to town. I need to find Sarek. And give him some bad news about his kin, and also uh, I have a thing. I have something to give to him. Gotcha. So you're looking Wait. for Sarek, and you got something I, to give to him, and his in burned down. How can I know that all down, what you say is true? Not uh, saying oh, that I disbelieve you, but I want to believe you. Me, didn't he give me like a something, a signet or something like that? I think he gave you a letter. Oh yeah. I here. I have a letter from him here. I pass the letter over. I'm glad I did not throw you into the lake. <laughs> that uh, would have I, been inappropriate. I just, yeah, I, it would have been at least, uh, inappropriate at least. Unfortunate, that is word. <laughs> uh, sure, that too. That Boy, one. this is certainly his handwriting. His terrible pensmanship. That's, that's my cousin for you. Always sending me some strange uh, company. <laughs> He's a good sort, though. Oh, he's a good sort. Family, you know. He's part of innkeeper. Right, family is, you know. But there's family that you would pick if you had the choice, and family you wish you could unpick, and he seems like the first kind and not the second. Yeah, perhaps I don't very know him very well. Not saying mm -hmm. that I despise the man, but he had the potential, and he just threw it all away to be an innkeeper. Why would you go and do that? I was wrong to be an innkeeper. So, so that traveling friends can have warm place to sleep. Hey, well, that's, that's a reason to do profession. it, but when you have such talent for fighting, and you have such talent <gasps> for keeping the peace, why would you ever do that? Nah. That didn't make sense to me. He is a fighter? And Morden they missed calls, the opportunity? Morden calls all men to different pursuits. We kind of all be the same thing. It would be a boring world. Are you fighting as well? It would be a well? safer world. I'm a guard. I some fight, some make ends. If all of us were fighters, where would you go drink and sleep? Wherever you wanted, I suppose. I guess. Well, enough about Morak. Bless his soul. Anyways, you're looking for Sarek. Aye. <clears throat> what is his last name again? Oh, what is his last name again? <laughs> Oh look! Thanks, man. <laughs> that's that's back. Road from... notes. Note taker. Uh, that's back from when I. Let's see. Hi, Stu. Do you do? Sarek. That was back on. Hey, we're only on session Ooh. six. It's not that long ago. It's weird because it seemed like a long time, according to these notes. Sarek, he's son of artist Simber. Simber. Wow, Sarah Josh Simber. had it before you did? Yep. Son of I was Simber. just reading. Artist Simber visited a town obsessed with Nightstone. Had a boulder dropped on him. <laughs> Has a son in Bryn Shander. Ulgric Brighthelm yep. is also in Bryn Shander. 
Right. I can put so, out a few uh, feelers. So, I don't know him personally. And if he does reside here, I can probably find out for you. It won't be right away. Right. He That's raises funny. his hand to the bartender who's already on his way with a drink for him. How, how far ahead are you? How? Uh, he points we're on like brandy. number six, I believe. No, at only probably number four or five, I think. He nods to the bartender who understands the nod and comes back with a few more drinks for him. <laughs> oh, I'll try to catch up. Spirit. Oh, yeah, it's the spirit. Didn't Good really know who you were coming through the gates. I didn't want to just, uh, uh, you know, no hard feelings, I hope. No, I understand. Wasn't trying to be too misleading. Oh, it's fine. I understand. Caution. That's a good thing. Asked around, I mean, uh, nobody really knows who you are. Where you come from. I am Thomas. I'm Greatest I'm mage in all of self. Uh, shh, don't just let that slide. Greatest. Sometimes just... mean great means big, right? Yes. Also, I, greatest in power. <laughs> just let that one slide. Just let it slide. I like. I like. I the feel cast. like there's gonna be a lot of that slide tonight. I uh, yes. I'm gonna, I'm gonna have I, I this man is here with all of the ale. euphemisms, I, uh, euphemisms, uh, and letting his slide. <laughs> oh fuck! Uh, no, I, Madeline I, and Daria look at you. you and they say, Madeline says, "Thank you for your hospitality. We're gonna call it a night, but thank you so much." Madeline and Doria, I hope to see you again. If you are ever looking for adventuring companion out on the roads, you look at for Thomas. And we might have to take you up on that on our next travels. No, would you Very like me good. To make sure that you get home safely, okay? Sir Barrick stands up. I think that's my call as well, gentlemen. It's been good to see some faces that aren't from the north. May you stay I... warm. Very good, Mr. Burke. Same you indeed, also sir. shout if you need anything from Mr. Thomas. If you hear anything about Warvel the Weevil, I'll be here or, for a few more days. Warvel the Weevil. We will be also keeping an eye on this person. He stands up, goes to the bar, pays his tab, and takes off. There is no tab for you, Mr. Burke. Thank you kindly, but mine is my own. I, I took care of it. You have a great night. He puts his hand Perhaps on your shoulder next time. and uh, bids you adieu. Very well. Mm. That leaves the blacksmith, who hasn't really talked but has drank a lot. You're about nice. up to six gold total for your tab. Is he blasted? Uh, He's on number four. Let's find out. He is blasted. Okay. I will be, I'll walk him home to his sister, back to the blacksmith. Where do you live, son? Do you live in the shop? Yeah. Yeah. I, okay. I, hmm. You live at the, okay. One All more. Right. He shouts yeah. to the blacksmith. Okay, bartender. we'll take it for the road. <laughs> <laughs> I have to, hey, Ogric, I have to get this uh, wee lad back to his place. I don't think he's going to find it if his life depended on it. Okay. Oh, but, I did uh, offer the uh, the two merchant girls uh, walking them home in case they needed it. So I don't know if both of us are gone then, or no. You said you're going to what? Uh, I was offering to walk them home because, you know, it's night and the girl's walking home. Madeline Figured. nods. I, I didn't get your name. Please, that would be great. Yes, uh, it's Theodore. Well, Theodore, and she puts out her arm for you to take her arm. He is a good okay. man. You can be trusting him. So you're leaving Thomas <laughs> by himself? With Ogric. Oh, with Ogric. No, Arthur. Ogric there. There. <laughs> That's right. So is Arthur. There's Arthur's so many there. people, I forget. Yeah, so there's Thomas and Ogric. Arthur's and then at the next table over Eldora. is Arthur and Eldora. the lady who hasn't yet introduced herself to me. Right. So we're going to go back to Arthur. <laughs> when when you guys are talking, you overhear, Hey, Arthur, you guys come sit over here. We have plenty of room now. I think we've had enough time. 
Do you just want to spend the rest of the night in pleasantries? She smiles. Are you going to drink that? Uh, no, here you go. She does another silent wow and throws back Man. the fire brandy. This guy is missing every window. On <laughs> purpose. <laughs> you two rejoin the table with Ogrek and Thomas. Uh, Thomas, was uh, Mr. Carmen able to find who he's looking for? Well, this is the friend that he had connection with, Mr. Ogdrick. Good evening, Mr. Ogdrick. And you, That's you a have a friend as well. Yes, this is Deldora. Beldora, thank you. Beldora. <laughs> You don't even Good to be meeting you, Beldora. Come, have seats. What she makes you come to such to a Arthur, across from you? A warm, warm locale. The promise of good company. Thank you. Ah, yes, I am that. You are very lucky today to be meeting greatest mage of the south. All right, and you are the guard at the door. Have you ever seen? Uh, Wait, maybe you know the one that we are looking for. Um, Sarek. Do you know a Sarek? You're, telling, you're asked, asking Ogrek? Um, he's, he started looking to Ogrek, but then he changed tact and looked back over to uh, Beldora. you know a dwarf named Seldar Sarek? Um, no, no, sorry. Sarek's I don't dwarf. know anyone named Sarek. Mm. Very good. Yeah, they live I figured here? it'd be Mm, we believe so. That is, that is part of the reason we came all the way up to Bryn Chander. I mean, it's not too big a town, but I don't know everyone here, so I'm sorry. People come and go as well. Mm. It's very common well, for people to move here and realize they didn't want to be here and move away. Mm. I wonder why people would not, like, oh, yeah, of course I know why. There is no ocean here. That would make things very difficult <laughs> to stay. Did I hear something or overhear something about you buying drinks for everyone? <laughs> uh, yes, Arthur is buying drinks. Perfect. Uh, and she smiles at Arthur. He is he is very no, generous. Uh, Carmen has all the money. <laughs> I'm gone. <laughs> <laughs> oh, do not worry about it. <laughs> if we go over tab our tab, yet. we we will wash dishes until we are even Stevens. Uh, well, I'll tell you that I have not had one drink here, so I will not be doing any dishes. That will be all you, my friend. I lean forward kind of slowly, and I say, If you do not have drink, we are going to have a problem. Nice. No, Mr. Thomas. Now is perhaps time, tiny mage. She scooches her second drink over in front of you <laughs> to join in the uh, fun. Beer pressure, beer pressure. And... <laughs> Um, I get up, and as I get up, I, I, I must go to the bathroom. I sweep my hand and knock the shot glass that was meant for me onto the ground. And I go <gasps> to the bathroom. Oh, Can I use that control party. water cantrip to save it? <laughs> <laughs> party. Uh, you can shape water. I call whiskey enough water. <laughs> so that, okay, ice, ice, no, but whiskey, yes. Sure, that makes sense. <laughs> <laughs> So I'm gonna I'm gonna magic it up, and so that it hovers and it'll just kind of float in the air. Um, yeah, you can shape it. That's a very nifty trick. You you want this whiskey? And I like kind of offer it, float it over to her. She will. I don't know how to say this. <laughs> I'm not even going to say it because you can see it in your mind <laughs> she'll drink it she'll drink it <laughs> that's how you say it she'll drink it I'm glad you can't see me face palming in real life yeah <laughs> I mean how else would you word that I don't uh, know I bet you can why don't you give you it a try <laughs> uh, she'll let you snake it down her throat <laughs> oh god you just went there didn't you <laughs> Wow. Inspiration! Hard. Inspiration! Hard. And Theodore gets an inspiration. 
<laughs> for, for crossing the line that only Brian crossed. Yeah, that's my <laughs> job, and I got you to do it. <laughs> Yay, I refilled my inspiration for the day. <laughs> Yay. Take it straight. Oh. <laughs> oh, uh, all right. This one is fun, Arthur. When when Arthur comes back, I'm sitting on her side of the table. That's totally cool. <laughs> I'll just go sit where you were sitting. It's still warm. And a slightly Un saggy. Uncomfortably warm. <laughs> <laughs> the bench might never be the same again. Uh, Thomas, um, how would you like go to head back south to Hundlestone? What is Hundlestone? Uh, it's the town that we skipped. Remember when you insisted at stopping? Oh, yes. Yeah. yeah. Hey, we could stop on the way by and see if scarecrows are still present. <laughs> Garden cave. <laughs> oh, we know that place is good for be sleeping. Well, yes, we Hundlestone seem, seems fine. What do you want to do there? Uh, I have some business to attend to. Oh, Mr. Secret Business. I see. Okay. We do, yeah. she says, and she smiles. We do? All of us? That is exciting. Well, you what is our too. business? Well, Wait, what? Yeah, what Beldora is our business, be... Arthur? She, she's now intentionally goading you. We're going to be speaking to a gnome. A what? A gnome. Oh, I have heard of these things. They are the littlest of little people. They will be wonderful. I wonder if... Uh, what, what, do, what do we have to speak to a gnome for? Hmm. To find out more information about what is happening up north. Oh, we can ask many people who are up north, uh, if, even without going to Hundlestone. I'm looking for very specific information. We should, and... we should make that our mission tomorrow, to ask more people. She, she nods at you, Thomas. Yes, we can be having missions. Who? How long have you been in Prince Shander? I've been here for about ten years. Oh, we can ask you everything. Hey. I have better idea than going to Hundlestone. We can just ask Bildora just everything that we have. I face palm. First, <laughs> where are all the yaks? <laughs> Why are there no yaks here? That seems like a very strange thing. Do giants steal them? Hmm. Do not know. Also, you would think that there would be more musical instruments. I mean, how else do you pass day when you have no ocean nearby? And we will skip about five minutes of conversation. About <laughs> yada, yada, yada. I perform magic tricks. I use gust and shape water. And I just feed her whiskey blobs. And by about that time, Carmen is back. Yep, I am back. I'm walking the blacksmith back. Perfect home. timing. Perfect timing. Cool. Nothing of note happened since you left. That's what, what? I figured. <laughs> I meant in the game. Or in real Every life. <laughs> you, oh my god. <laughs> okay, so I walk back in and sit down at the table. Wave to everybody. You hear the trailing conversation about yaks again. Okay. <laughs> what about yak? La -da -da -da. Also, Beldora. Where do you, do you have a place to stay that can accommodate all of our traveling adventurers? <laughs> she almost spits up her drink a little. <laughs> uh, no, I can't. But I can suggest a few different places that you might go for the night. Oh. One of them being right here at Kelvin's. I'm sure he has a few rooms still available. Perhaps. Hopefully it was one with big enough bed. Most things I kept finding my feet falling off edge. Well, you'll probably have that trouble everywhere you go. It is it is difficult. Do you know the floor it has a lot of space? The, uh, you don't we, want to spend the uh, night camping again? I mean, we couldn't, but why would you camp when you can have the comforts of warm women and beds? Uh. See? 
There is no reason. <laughs> Even Carmen thinks so. Mm. What do you think, Arthur? She looks at I you. Think, I think we should come up with a game plan for tomorrow. I'm like... My mouth is open right now. We are I'm still discussing tonight. Like Why tomorrow? <laughs> <laughs> Arthur, you fucking dot, son. Have you had a drink yet? So, and I, I lean in and stage whisper to Arthur. Don't let him tell you your chances. <laughs> 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 if he That's says fair. you're deaf, you are probably not deaf. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. <laughs> Aye. We'll get him another drink. This lad needs a drink right here. Uh, uh, Mr. Carmen, we have... He brings over out. one more for Arthur, and he also brings one more for you. Aye, thank you much. Mr. Carmen. All right, this is Art. Beldora. Yeah, this is part of your adventuring lessons, Art. You got to drink it. Uh, listen. I told before... you I'd take care of you. That's what I'm doing. And I didn't... There are things you must learn if you are ever going to become a man. Gentlemen, let us plan out tomorrow. We are. I. We, this is part we, of the planning we, process. We have come to a fork in the road. We will plan either with you as little boy or we plan with you as man. Listen, lad, it's not so bad. God damn it, fuck's sake. And Just I pick up the shot glass. glass and I shoot it back. <laughs> there we go. Ah! <laughs> I, I give Thomas a high five. Cheers are <laughs> up around the table. <laughs> Yay. Even uh, Beldora's laughing. Uh, Ogrek's chuckling. I don't know what Theodore's doing. Oh, he went to walk the girls back home. That's right. Yep. yep. About this time, you walk back into the revelry of the bar and Arthur taking his first drink ever. Roll a constitution ah, finally check. Finally got him to do it, huh? Roll a constitution check. Disadvantage. Now, now you side. have to keep it down. Nope, not disadvantage. <laughs> Breathe through. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> I push his head away. <laughs> Some of it comes back out. through his nose, but not a lot of it. His eyes are streaming from the uh, firebrand whiskey. It is a little spicy going down. But he manages to keep it down without uh, chucking it, barely. Nice. There you go, lad. There you it's go. Dripping it gets down easier the sides every... of his mouth. It gets easier every time. Barkeep, like... we need another. <laughs> I feel like I'm about to Ralph, so my my head is down, my eyes are watery, and I pick my head back up, and it's just like snotty because I'm like. <laughs> <laughs> when you pick your head hey. back up, there's another drink set in front of you. Ice. It's easy. It's easier to everyone. Don't the worry. second one fixes the first. Aye, it does. And I, I just push it off the table. What? Gentlemen, ah. <laughs> the magic, and I bring it over toward your face. Oh. You can't save whiskey. <laughs> you can't save whiskey. Yeah. Save whiskey. <laughs> well, Aye, make, listen, a, make an attack roll, Thomas. Wait, what? You said you bring it over to his face. Oh, well, no, I just, just try cover to it in a blob okay. in front of him. <laughs> Not going to drown him in whiskey? Not going to no, drown him in well. whiskey. I just, I just, <laughs> I float it over Lad, toward his face. <laughs> you can't stop at one. That's not it's right. The, it's the worst way. Yeah. You'd be better off having none. Aye, but now that you've already broken the seal, you, you might as well go for it. Gentlemen, it is time to discuss tomorrow's activities after a drink I, yeah i already I, had one drink that yeah, is more gonna... than i have had in my entire life good for you lad what good about beldor you. here that's not ah fuck you and your scottish accent <laughs> <laughs> what about you i can't do it anymore i don't know i can't <laughs> fuck it. everything's <laughs> I don't know. Too much talking. <laughs> Everyone laughs while Arthur will not take the second drink. You look up and I've got my arm around Beldora. Who slyly worms her way out of his <laughs> uh, embrace and stands up. Well, I'll see you tomorrow, Arthur. And you as well, Thomas, Carmen, Theodore. I 
Well, that is the plan. Mm -hmm. Where will you find us? Here. You're staying, staying here, right? Evidently so. Perfect. Let's see if we can go talk somebody into having big enough bed for me. Yes, why don't you go talk to the barkeep? And she will sneak out the front door while you guys are distracted and busy with uh, talking to the barkeep. <laughs> no, Mr. Mr. Carmen. Art, what's you your problem? Concentrate one moment, please. You're... <laughs> Is it just the three of us left now? Four. Theodore's there. Andrew's actually. still there. Oh, oh Theodore. Theodore. Wait, no, Theodore came back. So did Andrew leave? Uh, unless you had anything else to talk about, he went home. No, I just want to know where we'll meet him tomorrow to talk about whether or not he can find Sarek. Well, you know, he uh, is a patron here, and you also know where to find him at the gate. Okay, cool. <laughs> yeah, I guess it's just us. Okay, it's just you four, finally. A lot of the other tables are uh, dispersing. There's a few regulars that are left, people that look like they live in the drink. There's a couple tables that are out to have a good time, still kind of partying as well. All right, lads, we got to talk about what we're going to do. I have to stay here until I find Sarah Simber. Yes, oh, we can help you with that. Um, as well, after we're done with the city, we're going to go down south again to the city that we missed coming up here in Hundlestone. Sure. After but, uh, we find Sarek and I've discharged my duty, I have no other plans. Did you want to talk to the sheriff tomorrow? Uh, sure, maybe we'll find some work while we're waiting to find out. What's going on with Sarek? Why not? Excellent. So we'll wake up and we'll go down to the sheriff first thing. We'll find out what he needs or what we can do for him. And then we'll sure. continue our search for Sarek. Sure. All right. That, that'll wrap up your guys' night. Mm -hmm. And I think that might be a good point to wrap it up for the day mm -hmm. uh, in real life. It is 1130. Okay. Uh, okay. <laughs> Let's do some shout outs and we can do roses and thorns. So we got a. Uh, oh, Agrosh, thank you for your follow. Shmelly, it's dropping bits and cheers. Got some. Biddies, thank you, uh, Shmelia, for the bits. Peace, Sano Man. I said that as carefully as I could. Thank you for your follow. And thank you, Red Bull True. We we had fun. Let's go ahead and do roses and thorns. Who wants to start? I'm going to have Alex start. Well, let's see. I randomly rolled it. I... I kind of like the uh, the fight at night that we had in the start. Uh, we managed to do a lot more than I thought we could a lot quicker than I thought we could, which is good because otherwise we were all going to die. Uh, so I'll say the, uh, the nighttime fight, which kind of highlights the, my character's uh, benefits. He gets the most benefit at night. Uh, so being my rose, uh, thorn, I'll say. <laughs> you, you, I don't know. Out. oh, there you are. Uh, it, it's kind of hard to pick for, uh, thorn cause there's so many of them. <laughs> <laughs> that damn Arthur. Uh, it's, it's what he's trying to make his character be. So it, you can't really say Arthur. You can't really say uh, Thomas. I mean, yes, like said it. everyone's everyone's kind of got their own uh, thing going on, so it's hard to pick a thing. I don't know if I really had a thorn in this game. Sweet, and something kind of going back to what you were talking about, like fighting at night highlights your character. And I've learned this uh, through my 
long time DMing is sometimes there's characters that make things trivial, kind of, or that they're just really good at. And sometimes you just gotta let them have that. You don't have to build around everyone's powers. Or the fact that you're so good in the night, I don't have to say, well, these guys can actually see invisibility, so you're gonna get attacked. Sometimes you just get those freebies, and it's good that way. You don't have to always build around it. <laughs> Go ahead, Thomas. Brian. Um, so I liked a couple things. The first one would be that Arthur has kind of his own little side story going on. Um, I appreciate some secrets, some quests, some uh, and just the way that you handled it. Being separate, but kind of overflowing into the rest of us. And it was fun to, to play someone completely oblivious to it and just think that Arthur brought one more person to the table and not have any idea that there's all sorts of like complications going on in the background. Um, and kind of mirroring what Alex said a little bit, the other thing that I liked was how it seems like we've all established like these different things, different character traits. Um, and whether it's, uh, you know, Thomas being loud and gregarious and a little bit oblivious, a little bit, um, or the way Theodore is going to walk people home, uh, that seemed like perfectly in character with him, like, or having, you know, Arthur's very quiet, uh, hesitating and shy personality which is apparently probably related to some of the secrets and um, Carmen's more it's kind of a, a leadership quality that's coming through but not because he's a great leader but because he is he's the dad he, he has like he has these ideas and he's stubborn like a dwarf, and so they become priorities, and so everyone kind of falls in line with them being like our goals. So it's a weird kind of nuanced leadership position that he's taken on, and it's it's fun to see all those things. Thorns, um, cities are hard. It's always hard to imagine the scope. And to get, you know, the marketplace, like what, like, like, oh, we found places with instruments and we found places with, you know, bones and furs and horns and whatnot, but not the simple thing that I was hoping for. That's always complicated to, like, I think I scaled up the version of the marketplace so much that it almost became inconsequential in my mind that we were going to find what I was looking for. And then, then there was nothing. Sweet. Josh. Uh, let's see. Rose, I like the social piece. Like once we got to town and how it was all like we're meeting with different people and talking with them and like the bar scene where were people kind of coming in and out and we're all having like conversation. I dig that part of the game a lot. And so I just liked all of that. Um, let's see. Thorn. Uh, I really, I, you know, this is sound weird. I wish the orcs had rolled better and Me it had too. been a harder fight. You know, yeah, like it wasn't that hard. And I feel like nine orcs should have been hard, but they rolled like shit. But I guess my concern is next time we'll have 15 orcs and they'll roll well. Right, so <laughs> I don't want to get super scaled up because they just rolled like complete and total ass. So true. And yeah, Matt. Um, <clears throat> I I have to go along with what Josh said. Um, I liked the bar. Um, it was kind of this convergence points of everything and there was several characters that met us there and um 
I like that my secret came out that I'm a harper. That was fun to fun to get out there, even though I wasn't prepared at all for it. <laughs> um, and I guess my thorn would be that I wasn't prepared, like for it because I, um, you know, I, I'm a, I, I'm getting more and more attached to the character, and uh, but it, you know, we didn't really write any deep backstories. I started to write some. I still have some, but I didn't really know anything about the Harpers, so that's my rose and thorn. Well, you put so much work into the other character for the next campaign. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, I, I do have a few paragraphs about Arthur. All ready right. to go for his backstory if it ever comes out. But well, I, hey, I guess I just didn't send them my way. I like that stuff. I read it all. You use them against you. Yeah, I would never do that. It's like, you'll be surprised with someone who knows Harper's as soon as you walk into a bar. I just I just <laughs> sent you what I had. Sweet. Well, let's see. I'll go with my thorn. I think my thorn is going to kind of go along the lines with your... I don't know if it was your thorn, Brian. Maybe it was. The uh, descriptions, the marketplace, the city... I always try to figure out how much description I should put in before it just becomes a chore. It just becomes like me telling you my novel instead of this is just a description of where you're at. And I always feel like I fall just a little short of how much I need to give. Like how big the marketplace is, how many stalls you see, just to give perspective, things like that. And it's always in the moment that I forget them. So that'll be my thorn. That'll probably be my thorn a lot of times. Just giving good descriptions. That being said, I would say my rose is along the lines with everyone else. Um, oh, and my other thorn, the orcs rolled like crap. Mm -hmm. That was terrible. Real bad. <laughs> and honestly, it's not because they rolled like crap. It's because there's this thing in my mind where if they were an encounter that's deadly to you and you roll them over like it's nothing... I'm afraid at some point you're going to see a combat that's deadly to you and go in unprepared and die. Like, okay, yeah, this is so is. easy for us. And Giant number one, we're dead. <laughs> yeah. Right. So I'm hoping that doesn't happen. But, I mean, you also did it before level five. That was an encounter scaled for level... It was barely scaled for level four. Not much different than what a level five encounter would be. So you you did really well on that. And level five is a huge uh, power spike for you guys. I think you get mm -hmm. another attack, Brian. I don't know about the ranger. Do they get another attack? Yep, I get three attacks turn one now. Yep. Arthur gets fireball. So it would have changed that encounter entirely if you were one level higher. So I was actually really surprised how well you did. Thorn and Rose. But my actual true Rose was probably playing all the NPCs. It's been mm -hmm. a while since I've had 10 different NPCs in one encounter, and I'm just trying to keep track of it all. But it was actually really fun, and I felt like I knew who they all were. And at the same time that I'm trying to figure all this out, you guys are trying to figure yourselves out. I know what I'm going to say when I get this NPC meets you, but I have no clue how you're going to react. So Arthur runs away from the first encounter with the Harper, <laughs> and I'm just like, what the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> that's kind of how it is with every NPC and there are NPCs in there that obviously weren't meant to be there like Daria and Madeline mm -hmm. maybe that's my rose the fact that you guys maybe missed the all the clues about Madeline and Daria and you thought Carmen that I knew full freaking oh, yeah. well I was like yeah, okay, dude, good. she's into you bro I was <laughs> trying to make it like as apparent as I can without outright having her arm around her. So I'm glad some of it picked up because it yeah, was pretty as soon funny. as like I had a, a hunch pretty early and then as soon as uh Madeline showed up out of game I understood what was going on. Well you caught on real quick then. Josh was oblivious the whole way through. Correct. <laughs> the whole way through. The whole time. She's into you, man. Yeah, she's into you, bro. <laughs> <laughs> That's probably my rose. 
That's pretty good. Hey, I get an inspiration for next game. Make my orcs hit better. There you go. Or whatever you might find. Maybe it'll be giants. Mm. We're going to go back to town uh, and have to fight orc skeleton. <laughs> Nine <laughs> zombie you orcs. Mm -hmm. that, hey, I can destroy undead now, so that's cool. What'd you do, Matt? Uh, Red Bull True in chat just said you guys agree. We would oh, stream thanks. more. We uh, are going to be streaming live. Week. Next week we'll be back in live. So come join us then. I know we do it early. You were the one that mentioned it's early. It is early. I got up at 5 a.m. So, this morning. So early. I was up before you. I yeah. can't wait to be back live. I got everyone new microphones. So you all have the same kind I have. No more lapels. Nice. That'll be fun. That's cool. Hopefully it'll uh, work out very well. Um, that's all I had. Thank you, everyone, for joining us. Come join us on Discord. I'll link that in the chat. I usually forget to do that. Mm -hmm. And join us next week so I can go full-on cam girl again. Oh, man. <laughs> I'm going to start deducting your inspirations after uh, your yep. cam girl attempts. Yeah. After, Remember to after the first one. Bra, Matt. I will. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you can't beg, bro. Yeah, you can only, uh, well, you can beg, but it doesn't mean it'll get you anything. Yeah, just because you talk to someone. All the orcs look at the mage at once. Oh, right. no. <laughs> Killed the mage. Killed that guy. He's begging. <laughs> no, come join us on uh, Discord. Come join us on YouTube. I release all the music we have in the background. So if you want to use that for your own streams, your own home games, it's all commercial free. You can, uh. It's all separated by playlists. We'll see you guys next week. Thanks, everyone.